Mets have been climbing uphill in their home game so far this season. Met fans coming out hoping they can get even with the Phillies on another steamy afternoon in New York. At City Field in New York, Picks 11 Sports presents New York Mets baseball. Today, the Mets play the Philadelphia Phillies. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez, Ron Darling with you today as the Mets play the middle game of their series against the Phillies. Phillies won last night 13 to 8 in the first game after the All Star break as the Mets continue to struggle here at City Field. They played very well on the road, over 500, but here at home, a whole different story. Well, you know, they're one of seven, te seven teams uh, that are playing. Under uh, over 500 on the road. They've been struggling ever since Terry's tenure. You see those numbers right there. But I'm more concerned about the present this year. Uh, they have struggled at home. Is it a carryover from 2007, 2008? I don't think so. David Wright's the only member of that team left standing. I just think that it's a young team. I have always said, Gary, that I feel a lot more pressure. I felt more pressure playing at home than on the road. I think maybe that's kind of here. They're, they want to win. They're struggling. They try too hard. All those things. There's an old adage in baseball. If you, when you want to win, you play 500 on the road and you make hay at home. Well, this team is playing over 500 at home, but not making hay I mean, on the road and not making hay at home. And especially against the Phillies, who've now won seven straight games here at City Field. And Zach Wheeler will try and put an end to that as he comes back 10 days after his best start yet as a major leaguer. You know, you mentioned that he started in his home at Atlanta. He started his first game for the Mets. He started against the old team, the Giants, against uh, who drafted him, and he was outstanding. Now he gets his start against the Philadelphia Phillies. Other Mets pitchers, starting pitchers, have faltered. Maybe Zach Wheeler can get on a good roll. Best thing about Wheeler so far, runners on base, they're only batting 140. Now, early in the season, Cole Hamels was a struggling pitcher for the Phillies in the first year of a big six-year contract, but he has begun to turn it around lately. Although it's not a total aberration. He's given up five earned runs or more six times this year. That's why their record is not very good. But he's been great, and the Phillies have won the last four times. He's taken the mound. So it's the Mets and the Phillies on a hot day in New York. Wheeler against Hamels. All the action coming your way this afternoon right here on Pix 11.
Cheers is your number one mobile app for live baseball, available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At Bat delivers Mets baseball with live audio, stats, highlights, and more. Text at Bat to 31826 or visit Mets.com for detail. Keys to the game brought to you by Jaguar. I see the new model year lineup at JaguarUSA.com. Well, let's see if I can do this better than I did on the open. Uh, <laughs> Zach Wheeler, of course, has to go deep into the game. The bullpen was really taxed yesterday. And, you know, they had four days off. It's been tough on them. They've been really taxed for around a month. And, of course, Cole Hamels has been the story. He's really turned his bad start around. He's been pitching great. And the Mets, look at that against left-handers. How about that? They are killing them, and let's keep it up if you're a Met fan. That's a long stretch of starts against left-handed pitchers a couple of weeks ago. Now back into that mode again today and tomorrow. First pitch from City Field is coming right up. When carrying the Mets lineup card, Mick Billmeyer for the Phillies. And with his back to you, rookie home plate umpire Will Little, our first look at him behind the plate. Starting lineup brought to you by your local Tri Honda dealer and the same starting eight for the Phillies. Interesting, you've got an older team, day game after a night game, but Charlie Manuel runs out the same eight that he played last night, and why not after 13 runs and 15 hits? And that's the unit that'll go up against. Zach Wheeler in his first ever start against Philadelphia. Well, you'll look at Zach Wheeler's numbers here. Um, he's had two starts that have not been good, but the other three have been outstanding. Uh, less than an earned run given up in all those starts, and his last one was the best by far. Aggressive in the strike zone, aggressive with his fastball. He threw it over 70% of the time. Mixed in his slider, mixed in a little bit of a curveball, mixed in a few changeups, but very aggressive. And we'll take a look at the Metropolitan, your Metsy defense brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And Anthony Recker right now, I think, has been doing a heck of a job behind the play, getting some big home runs, uh, really improved defensively back there, and also has given John Buck a chance to get a respite. And as a result, Buck has been hitting much better. There's Anthony. Recker caught Wheeler's debut in Atlanta and has not caught him since, but he's back there today. Zach making his sixth start today. He's three and one. He's only the fourth mid pitcher ever to get three wins in his first five starts starting their career as a Met. Tom Seaver is one. Octavio Dotel is another. Only one Met pitcher ever had four wins in his first five starts, and he'll never get it. Jason Hockamy. Hockamy. Wow. What year? Soft tossing lefty. 
from? What what what, uh, what time was? Alchemy what's... was uh, early 90s, mid 90s. Blackout oh. period. Here's your umpiring crew: the aforementioned Will Little. Our first look at him behind the plate. Mike Winters, the crew chief. There's Mark Wagner and Tim Timmons, who had the plate last night. So on a, another hot day, the weather's supposed to break later today, and we should have cooler temperatures tomorrow. But it's in the mid 90s as we start play today. Jimmy Rollins will lead things off. He led off the game with a base hit last night. In fact, he's now hit in 15 straight games against the Mets. Rollins at 257 for the year. It'll be Rollins, then Michael Young, and Chase Utley for the Phillies, who, with their win last night, are now a game over 500. That's been their high water mark for the season. And Wheeler's first pitch of the night of the day is inside. For a ball one. Always like a first pitch fastball in to kind of set the tone inside. He moved Rollins off the plate. Well, we've certainly seen it in his last two starts against the White Sox and the Giants. He has been throwing predominantly fastballs early in the game, which is something he was not necessarily doing in his couple of starts before that. I think he did it in the first start, uh, yeah, against the Braves. But after that, uh, trying to mix all his pitches in, keep it simple. Fastball slider. Go get him. Rollins hits one deep to right, chasing Bird back to the warning track, and right at the wall, leaps and he can't oh. get it. It's a home run for Jimmy Rollins to lead off the game. Rollins with his fifth home run of the year breaks a long home run drought and gives the Phillies an instant one nothing lead. Well, Rollins is always. Uh, shined against the Mets. That goes back to those days with Jose Reyes here, the competition of the shortstops. Rollins thrives on that. Spotlight in New York, and here he is right here, leadoff home run. He had gone 161 at bats without a home run, and he breaks that drought. May 31st, the last time that Rollins went deep. Michael Young takes a strike. Well, Bird just runs out of room here. He's there. Just enough. So the Phillies who pounded Jeremy Hefner early and often last night. Getting off to a quick start this afternoon. Young was one for four last night. He had a three run homer. Well, it only seems like Jimmy Rollins gets a hit or two in every game against the Mets now 16 straight games. Jay Sutley on deck. So Wheeler's now given up five home runs in 28 innings. Well, when you pitch from behind, it was a 2 0 count. You know, no matter how hard you throw, the good hitters are going to look for their pitch. So it's all the key that he had success, Ron. He threw so wonderfully in San Francisco. Yeah. Got ahead of hitters. With the 27th home run Rollins has hit against the Mets last night, Chase Utley hit his 30th against the Mets. So those two have been doing a lot of damage in flushing for a long time. It's a case of a young pitcher having 10 days off, and he is throwing the ball as hard as he's thrown it since he's come up. We've seen him, not necessarily where he wants to throw it. 3 2 to Young, and he fouls off the fastball at 96. It's an interesting it contrast, is. isn't it, Ronnie? It, it is. It, it's you know he recognizes the moments to get the bullet's neck and get a little tougher. He's going to have to do a little better job here with, of course, obviously, uh, guys leading off innings and with no one on base. And you got to keep in mind that this is only his sixth start. He's going once around the league. Hitters haven't seen him yet. They do know. I do see one thing the hitters are doing. They are gearing on fastball on him. And why not? I mean, he that's his best pitch. So what we saw in San Francisco with him mixing his pitches up and over uh, up and getting the curveball over the breaking stuff. He's going to win if he can do that. Cantonia plays it on the backhand and throws out Michael Young for the first out of the day. You know, if you're trying to evaluate both uh, value both these pitchers and evaluate them, Gary and Keith. Think about that three two count on Young right there. Matt Harvey's at a place where he could throw the three two slider and put him away. Wheeler's not there yet. Is that something where later in a game he might feel more comfortable doing that? I would think so, but in the first inning, you know, he's probably too pumped up. 
get a rhythm. Now Chase Utley, two for five last night, a triple and a home run, drove in three runs, and the fastball sails outside one and zero. I mean, the same thing happened with Nolan Ryan, Gary, early in his career. He was wild, a big hard thrower with a good curveball, and and just wasn't refined. And Nolan found it out. He figured it out. Harvey, um, <clears throat> Harvey, notwithstanding, power pitchers might be a little bit like power hitters. Didn't Gary you say that you were told once that it takes power hitters two to four years before you can really evaluate uh, what they are going to become? And I think it also is important to recognize that everybody's different. You know, there are some players, whether they're pitchers or hitters, who can come up and dominate early, but not everybody's that way. See what Harvey did in his first five starts and what Wheeler has done in his. And I think Wheeler's needs to be up in the big league level. He's worthy of having a big league uniform. I'm not pitching down in Triple A. There's a strike to Utley, three and one. That's a good call, Keith. He needs to be here. This team is, uh, you know, wants to get the 500 here at some point, and he'll be a big part if they do. Hey, let him take his lumps up here and learn. That's 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 how you learn by your mistakes. Three and two now, Dudley. With Dominic Brown waiting on deck. Oh, geez. I knew it was sunny. The creamsicle. I think it's a wig. <laughs> Better. <laughs> and Utley grounds a roller down to Satin. And that's the second out. So a couple of ground ball outs for Wheeler after the leadoff home run by Rollins. And now Dominic Brown will come to bat. Brown hit a two run bomb into the Pepsi porch last night among his three hits. Now second in the National League with those 24 home runs and fourth in the league with 69 runs batted in having himself a breakout season. Brown now has 44 extra base hits which is third in the league. And he pops this one up. Might be playable. Right and Wrecker converge, and Wrecker gets there first. Side retire. The Phillies get off to a fast start. Jimmy Rollins with a leadoff home run. Mets come to bat down one nothing. Dealer Mets facing a left hand starter so Josh Satin gets a start at first base same for Juan Lagares in center field as the Mets go up against Cole Hamels for the third time this year. Well 90 and 61 coming into this year rewarded with that huge hundred forty four million dollar contract and now the last four or five starts starting to pitch like he has in the past. Began his year two and eleven, but in three starts in July, he's two and zero with a 1.57 ERA and pitching more like the Cole Hamels we've come to know. 
Eric Young will lead things off. Young has led off the first inning getting on base in six straight games now. And he's gotten on base at least twice in eight straight games. So he has done a spectacular job at the top of the Mets batting order. And if you look at Young's career numbers, they're, they're really not impressive. But he's never had a chance at Colorado to play every day. He's been basically a platoon player. Better right hand hitter. This is his first opportunity of playing every day and he's ran with it and he's starting to hit better left handed. And Hamels gets a call. One and one. Well the year for Hamels could not have started worse. He actually pitched a, a winning game against the Mets in late April one of only two wins that he had in his first 13 decisions this year but even in that game. As Young flies one out to center and John Mayberry ambles in. And that's the first out. Even in that game, he walked six batters in six innings and didn't seem quite himself. And then we'll take a quick look at the Toyota Philly defense brought to you, obviously, by Toyota. Let's go places. And, well, Rollins is getting older. He can play. But leave that cornerstone. Those two guys have been there, it seems like, forever. Gold Glover last year, third time Gold Glover, I believe. Was it three? He's got, I believe so. Oddly, a five time All Star. Here's Daniel Murphy, who's riding a nine game hitting streak, and he was stepping out as that pitch was thrown. Something was wrong with Murph's helmet. Maybe it doesn't fit with the short locks. Never seen Murph with the. Uh, Watch, he takes his helmet right away. Kind of something in it or sand or. Perhaps he had a bee in his bonnet. Curveball from Hamels in for a strike, and it's 0 2. Speaking of bees, every year I've uh, been Wrigley Field playing September games in Wrigley, the Yellow Jackets come out. And one flew right down my nose almost against Dick Tidro with the Cardinals. And I bailed out of that box because I have a great fear of bees. I, I just, I do. Bees and wasps, like, uh, that's my phobia. Did they get you? I am so quick that be he missed me. <laughs> Can outrun a bee. <laughs> Float like a butterfly. <laughs> Murphy lines one down the right field line and he's got himself an extra base hit. Chased in the corner by Delman Young. And Murphy cruises in with his 23rd double of the year. Well, here we call in April. Murph got off a real good start, extra base hit wise, and there he turns on. That's not a bad pitch, really. That ball's belt high, sinking in on his hands, but Murph really was quick inside there. And interesting in that preceding that pitch, Hamels had thrown back-to-back curveballs, a pitch that at times it seems like he abandons. And I think it's a good pitch for him. And, and what he tried to do is throw that change of bounce, and he did. That was up in the strike zone. Good job by Murph. Murph has become really a single hitter against single hitter against left-handed pitching. It's only his sixth double. He has no home runs against left-handers this year. So Murphy now has a 10-game hitting streak. He's the tying run in scoring position with one out for David Wright. It was two for five last night. Hit a two-run homer in the ninth inning. This is Zach Wheeler between innings after giving up the leadoff home run to Rollins. He goes to the nail file. RJ, I, I've honestly never done that on the bench, but I've seen other pitchers do it. You know, in the first inning, you'll pull a nail, get a hang nail or something. And he's trying to file it down. Hi. Well, I can tell you, Bob, Bob Emery boards and Bob Force, the late Bob Force, who pitched for the Cardinals, he would spend all four days of his start run filing down his index finger and his middle finger. He would file it down. Every day on both underneath and make it razor blade sharp and then put Paula lacquer over it. Yeah. And then he'd do it every day. And so that was how he cut his ball. He had a razor sharp. He'd hold the ball in his hand and his fingernails would be able to gouge into the ball. Jeez. One, two to David inside and low two and two. Well, the Mets trying to learn the strike zone of this rookie home plate umpire, Will Little. We've seen a lot of first time home plate umpires in the last two or three weeks. And it's got to be an adjustment for guys. Well, Little has already shown he's searching for strikes. Called a couple of borderline pitches already. And now a full count to right. Mm. 
McDavid has had great success against Hamill. 333 with four home runs. That's over 57 at bats. David starts today fourth in the league in on base percentage, eighth in slugging percentage. Murphy's running and Wright fouls it off. So Murphy getting a jump on Hamels, but you like that with a 3 2 count? I don't like anybody stealing when a hitter has two strikes. It's a it's a distraction. Now, unless David has said I have no problem with it, fine. I did Murph asked him. I don't know that. Is that less of a distraction with the lefty on the mound because no, the field you division can, is you different? can see the runner going, and it can be a distraction. He's going again, and Wright takes ball four, and Murphy steals the base uncontested. So it's the 11th stolen base of the year for Murphy, a walk to Wright, and the Mets have runners at the corners for Marlon Bird. Well, Hamels has been very vulnerable to the stolen base this year. That's the 15th he's given up in 20 tries. And now Marlon Bird. He hit his 16th home run of the year last night. Three run shot. He's now driven in 13 runs in his last nine games. Trying to pick up Murphy from third. Wright's at first with one out. Hit hard. Base hit for Bird. And that'll tie up the game. Murphy trots in. Bird wastes no time, drives in his 55th run of the year, and the game's tied at one. Well, I tell you what, if Marlon keeps it up, he's going to drive in 100 runs this season for a team that has really struggled to score runs. First pitch, fastball hitting, not wasting any time. Fastball inner half, down. Murph is on, not on the, on the, actually with runners on first and third. You don't want to get double up. Make sure the ball gets through the infield on a, on, a, on a line drive like that. So Murphy with a double, right with a walk. Bird drives in a run with a base hit, and now Josh Satin getting the start at first base today. Satin pinch hit last night and grounded out in his only at bat, and fouls back the first pitch fastball. Satin at 3.55, he's hitting 4.48 against left-handed pitching, and. Terry Collins said it in a way that was probably more definitive than he has at any time this morning that it is now a platoon with Ike Davis and Josh Satin. He didn't use the word platoon, but he basically said Satin's going to play against lefties. That means today and tomorrow against Cliff Lee. His fact was he deserves a chance to play. His intimation was he gives them the best chance to win. Mm -hmm. Ike had a good night last night with the bat. Went two for four, but his next start will be on Monday when the Mets face Julia Tehran and the Braves. One on one to Sam. Gives a guy like Sam who has a great eye, a little advantage. A little little last year, spent most of the season home plate umpire in the International League, so certainly was behind the plate for some of the games that Sam played with in Buffalo. I wonder, you know, we, we talk all the time about players coming up from the minor leagues and sometimes changing their game because they think they have to rise to a yeah. different level. I wonder whether their umpires are like that too. Oh, absolutely. Whether they change their game when they get to the big league. I don't think they want to change their game, but they 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 change it only because they're uncomfortable. It's a new place. Guys you've read about are right in front of you. And also ah. under tremendous scrutiny for the first time. There you go. I mean, they're being watched by evaluators in the minor leagues, but it's different when every TVI is on you and every missed call becomes a call celeb. I'd hate to get a report card coming out of this booth every day, I'll tell you that. <laughs> two and two to Satin with two on and one out. Juan Lagaris waits on deck. And he pulls the fastball foul. Well, 
We talked about David Wright moving closer to the plate, getting Ike Davis to turn, get closer to the plate. Josh Satton, that's a comfortable spot away, but we'll look at his hands. He holds his hands out over over the plate a little bit. It's something that I did too in my in my how I held my bat. I held my bat away from my body. I guess the question I would have with Sat with as far over the inside corner as he's holding his bat and with all that movement, how does he get to the inside pitch? No, well, that's a timing thing uh, when you start, and that's also when you have a lot of movement, you can go into more prolonged slumps. Now, we haven't seen enough of Josh. He's come up and just done a terrific job. He's been red hot. Runners go outside ball four and the bases are loaded. So four straight Mets have reached second walk of the inning for Hamels and Juan Lagares will come up with the bases loaded. Lagares came off the bench last night and had a couple of hits. A single and a double. This is his first start in better than two weeks because the Mets have not been facing much left handed pitching lately. But over his last eight games, Lagares is hitting 364 and has shown some very positive signs. Well, it's very difficult for a young hitter to be in that kind of have that kind of role. And he's really done a great job. He's gone the other way a lot, Gary. And that's why I think he's been successful. He's used that right center field and even that right field line. Last night he had a double to right center almost put one right on the right field line toward the corner that just missed. Bases loaded one out a run already in here in the first and Lagares fouls it back. Nothing in two. There's a pitch to hit right there a little bit up out of the spot up enough. Anthony Wrecker hitting seventh in the order is on deck. Hamels M.O. I'm certain that Lagares is going to get one pitch inside here at least. Although Hamels has hit seven batters this year. His 25th pitch of the inning already. And Lagares floats one behind first base. Ruff going back. Ugly. They can't get it. In the score comes David Wright. It's two to one New York. A little parachute that fell beyond the infielders. Lagares with an RBI, and the Mets grab the lead. Well, you'll take it. Rich Duby is going to come out and talk to Hamels here. This is the fastball Ronnie called for, and good pitch. And you know how much you can do about this. It's a ball that five years ago Chase Utley catches, but not anymore. I mean, it seems like only yesterday Lagares was on the interstate, right? 160, 170, now close to 250. Very quietly. It's a kid who has worked incredibly hard. We've talked about it before. He's very, very serious, and he has taken to heart the instruction that he's gotten. He's still a very aggressive hitter, as Terry Collins acknowledged today, but he has consciously used the right side of the field, and it's really paid off for him. So now Anthony Wrecker with the bases still loaded. Two runs already in. Wrecker's last start was eight days ago in Pittsburgh. His 20th start of the year. Only 13 hits this year, but five of them have been home runs. And Hamels misses away for ball one. And Hamels cannot find his rhythm. We saw a red hot hitter, a red hot pitcher in Jeremy Hefner taken on the chin in the first inning last night. Hamels similarly hot before the break. He hasn't had quite as much rest. He pitched the last game before the All Star break for the Phillies on Sunday. And he falls behind on record 2 0. So he's only had one extra day of rest in between starts. His last one was against the White Sox on Sunday, went eight strong innings. A no decision game for him, gave up only two runs. And he's already given up two runs in the first inning today. Ronnie you've been in situations like this where a team really puts the pressure on you early in the first inning and you're trying to find it. What did you try to do? You know, that's ball three. You're scuffling. I mean that's what you're trying to do. It's 2 0 there. You don't have enough confidence in your stuff that you go to a 2 0 changeup against Anthony Wrecker who certainly isn't Babe Ruth. So uh, interesting choice there uh, by Cole Hamels trying to trick the hitters as opposed to be aggressive. No well, record will take at least one. Here's a strike three and one. 
Those are numbers there. Keith, to, to answer your question, I try to keep in the back of my mind, once I've been in the league a few years, what's the situation? The situation calls for a ground ball. Keep the ball down, get a ground ball. Throw a strike, but concentrate on down as opposed to the corners. Get your ground ball, and hopefully it's at someone. 3 1 come at a record, and he loses oh. the bat on the changeup, and it hits the top of the dugout and skims into the stand. Well, it has been hot and humid, and I have to tell you folks out there, you're out there living it like we are, and uh, it's sometimes a grip on these muggy, hot days. You really got to have that stick them on the bat, good sinker. Well, he threw him a 2 0 changeup, so I guess it shouldn't have surprised record too much to get a. 3-1 changeup. Oh, that guy almost got it in the chops. Oh, he is so lucky. He has no idea. Didn't didn't spill his beer, just a little bit. Got him on the right shoulder. It could have been. Well, oh my gosh. Fortunately, because the bat bounced on the dugout, it took a little steam off it. Instead of give that fan a contract, give that fan some life insurance. <laughs> now it's three and two to record with the bases loaded and one out. And Anthony grounds one down to third. Might be a double play. Double clutch by Young. Utley with a turn. Not in time. That little double clutch by Michael Young costs the Phillies a run. It's three to one, New York. Well, you know, when he double clutch, uh, it's too late. I mean, once you double clutch, you can't just change gears and then throw home. I thought he might have tried, but his record doesn't run well to go tag third, but too far away. And good hustle by Wrecker. Rough he, trying to cheat. Not much of a stretch there. But he, he, he was clearly safe. So Wrecker picks up his 14th RBI. Three runs are home. And Omar Quintanilla bats with first and third and two out. Quintanilla one for four last night. Drove in a run. And he takes the cutter outside. Ball one. Well, this is what happened in San Francisco, Gar, when they got... To, Young Wheeler some runs early and he just seemed to loosen up and throw the best game he's thrown all year. That scored three in the top of the first inning in that game. Now three in the bottom of the first for Wheeler. Another cutter this one in for a strike one and one. Well, Hamill's already up to 33 pitches in the opening inning. Last night Jeremy Hefner threw 37 in a four run first inning. And the Mets turning the tables on Hamill's here. Two and one to Quintanilla. Zach Wheeler, who has swung the bat pretty well, would be next if Quintanilla keeps the inning alive. Zach hit one over the center fielder's head in San Francisco in his last outing for a double. It was a little league day for him, <laughs> as Ronnie would say. <laughs> Quintanilla grounds one toward the hole. Utley runs it down. And makes the play to end the inning. But the Mets put up a three spot against Cole Hamels in the bottom of the first. Marlon Bird drove in the first run. Juan Lagares with a bloop got home the second. And Wrecker drives in the third. Three to one New York as we go to the second.
Day presented by Gold's Horseradish. The first 25,000 fans in attendance at the 110 game against the Phillies will receive a Dwight Gooden All Star bobblehead as part of the 2013 All Star bobblehead series. Go to Mets.com for tickets. It's a day to keep cool. What are you featuring there? Pretzel? No, hot dogs, but. I believe that's just the bun. And then the truck that you uh, talked about before pregame. That's the, uh, the giveaway item today. Yes. WB Mason truck. Fan's a good idea. Fan for a fan. Well, a very rough first inning for Cole Hamels. 35 pitches. Mets put up a three spot. Of course, uh, troubles against the Mets, not something new for Hamels, who had his, uh, his woes against the Mets after some ill timed remarks a number of years ago. Darren Ruff leads off in the second inning against Zach Wheeler, who's now staked to a two run lead. Ruff has taken over at first base for the injured Ryan Howard. Two for five last night. This is his 10th start. Well, so far, so good. I like him as a hitter. He's got a short stroke for a big guy. Well, he hit 38 home runs in the minor leagues last year, which, of course, earned him the nickname Babe. <laughs> Babe Ruff. Oh, he's got a baby face. One thing about TV, it makes everybody look older than they really are. And you get around them in person and you realize how young some of these players are. Combination of how young they are and how young we're not. I think that's part of it, too. See, I always heard that TV put 10 pounds on it. <laughs> it does. <laughs> And Wheeler has his first strike out of the day as he blows away rough for the first out of the second. As you move along in your career, you try to establish what you can make that pitch. That's what it's all about for a right handed power pitcher. Can you dot that outside corner with your fastball whenever you need to? He did there. And one thing about Wheeler, he's got that nice, easy, free motion. And that ball is like on an electric wire. It just, it just zings into home plate. It was Delman Young who had a good night at the plate last night, three for five, and drove in a run. If you want to equate it, maybe even to a a whip. You know, you take a whip and you kind of just let it go, nice and easy. At the end, it snaps. Well, that's what Wheeler's like. The Mets got their nice blue hats on today. I always like the blue in the Met uniform. Well, there's an electric fastball, one and two to Young. Well, that's how it should be. Four percent change up, absolutely, Ryan. That, that's his last pitch. But what we've seen these last few starts, his first time around the batting order, it's been more like 90 percent fastball. Just keep it very simple. Um, like Keith said, he's learning on the job. The simpler you can keep it, the better the execution will become. 2-2. Two, two. Lifted foul. If he stays ahead in the count, he's going to be okay. Then he can throw the breaking ball if he wants, and he's indicates two and one. I mean, I want one and two. Or two and two. He gets his rhythm. He's young. He should be a freight train. Here I come, and I'm coming after you. Again, the 2-2 two, two to Young. And it's lined the other way, a base hit. So the Phillies have their second hit off Wheeler, a one out single for Delman Young, who's been very hot with the bat. Nice hitting. This is a fastball away. Now, both hits have been fastballs away. Now, the leadoff home run to Rollins was a 2 0 fastball away up. This one was a good pitch, and you just have to tip your hat to the hitter. They're getting paid, too. Remember, of course, that Delman Young was the number one overall pick in the draft. 10 years ago from Tampa, Tampa Bay. Bay. Yeah. So a, a number one overall pick facing a number six overall pick in Zach Wheeler. Here's Mayberry. Who's taken over as the center fielder with Ben Revere out with a broken foot and he takes a strike. Mayberry two for four last night drove in a couple of runs. Second generation major leaguer. Phillies are not 100% sold on 
Mayberry as a two month solution in center field and that appears to be how long Ben Revere is going to be out. Nub foul what they've done is they've taken a second base prospect Cesar Hernandez who was up with them earlier in the season and they put him in center field in triple A been down there playing center field for seven or eight games and they're hoping maybe Hernandez can take to that position and if not at least if not take the job for Mayberry at least provide them some better defense at that spot. Don't forget Mayberry is not really a spring chicken anymore. He's 29 years of age. You know, so he's getting on to 30. Of course what losing Revere does is it, it, it takes away the team some of the team speed for this Phillies team that you know is an older team doesn't run all that well and Revere was a you know, catalyst at the top of that batting board. And of what uh, Eric Young has provided for the Mets. Mm -hmm. you now the real issues for the Phillies are there is their bullpen the bullpen is uh, hasn't been up to snuff. One two from Wheeler and Mayberry loops one shallow center Ligaris will have to play that on the hop. So back to back hits for the Phillies. First and second and one out and the number eight hitter Carlos Ruiz. Ruiz one for five last night. Doubled in a run. He's got 132 at bats now only seven runs batted in last year. Had a tremendous offensive year. Hit 325, 16 homers, 68 RBIs. But suspension and injury have short circuited Ruiz this year. And remember that Ruiz was a guy whose career got off to a late start. He's 34 years old. Two on and one out for Wheeler. If I remember correctly, Gary, uh, his suspension was uh, amphetamine related, correct? Right. That's why it was only 25 games, right. not 50. Dot on the outside corner, one on one. Well, that's what Ruiz did last year, a career year for him. Last year you had three catchers in the National League who were worthy of MVP discussion Molina, Posey, and Ruiz. Hamels is not hitting this year, but is a good hitter by trade. Two and one now to Ruiz with two men on. And Wheeler got in on his hands. Two and two. The same pitch he threw Mayberry that he was able to fight off for a single to center field. That pitch beat Ruiz. Sixth major league start for Zach Wheeler. 23 year old. Out of Smyrna Georgia. Now the 2 2. And Ruiz pops one foul again he got in on his hands. Ruiz was looking inside there. Because that ball was almost. All six inches is on six inches inside. And he got the barrel out he had to be looking middle in. That ball was running in hard off the plate inside. So you're gonna get a fastball from Wheeler, so you can you can look middle in and try to jack him. Now the two-two, and again he got his hands. Wheeler will have to go to first with this, and he gets the out as the runners move up. And Wheeler relentlessly inside against Carlos Ruiz gets the comebacker for the second out. Well, I like the double up on the fastball in, Ronnie. This is the third one in a row, and. That you don't is. ever want to see that swing if you're a hitter. So now two out the tying runs in scoring position and Cole Hamels steps in four for 32 this year with one RBI. Boy look at that defense in the outfield really in shallow Lagaris and young. Hamels swings a pretty good pass. It's a, a little scary for uh, the center field to be playing that shallow I, but. 
Lagares has shown you, you can go back as well as anyone in the league. I don't like. I think that Young and Young's too close to the line for my my liking, and they're both in too shallow. Um, Marlins playing about a proper depth, I think, out in right field. Well, I, I think teams defensively don't sometimes understand what's going on here. Where is Hamels going to hit power against a guy throwing 95? It's going to be the center and left, not the right field. He very rarely will pull a ball, so it should be almost the opposite. The only ball that he's going to pull is the ball that's going to be a hanging curve ball. He's not going to get the barrel out on a fastball. Last year, when Hamels had a tremendous pitching season, he also had a very good offensive season. He batted 217 last year, which any pitcher will frame and put on the wall. <laughs> Wheeler ahead one and two. And he sells that fastball two and two. Well, from that shot there, it's interesting to see how that ball comes out of Wheeler's hand. It's just lightning quick. Jimmy Rollins, who homered to lead off the game, hoping for a turn here in the second. And Hamels goes down on strikes. Wheeler with his second strikeout of the day. And the Phillies strand two in scoring position. All is brought to you by your Tri State BMW Centers. Boy, that's just a gorgeous view. And it's actually not so oppressively hot today. Got a beautiful breeze going through the stadium, and it's much cooler. I thought it was just going to be insufferable today. Sometimes we could be called insufferable. I dressed appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> now you had your uh, your burger judging I duties today. Yes. How many uh, how many burgers did the big guy eat? Five minutes. Uh, they ate uh, seven, 17 burgers. They got at one. Is that with a bun? But they got to eat the entire oh. thing too. I can't even imagine. Gotcha. Zach Wheeler first pitch swinging fouls went away. Uh, they like 17 in five minutes. I mean, full size burger. Uh, they're, they're a little smaller than the kind of burger you'd make on a grill. They're not a White Castle burger. Right. Not a White not Castle sliders. burger. No doubt. We don't want to insult the Brooklyn burger guys. Their, their, their meat is <laughs> quality. <laughs> I was saying White Castle size. I, let me tell you something about White Castle. When I was in the minor leagues of the American Association. We played in Indianapolis, and that's where they had my first White Castle burger. I had four of them. I had heartburn for a week. <laughs> Part of the joy, part of the crave. <laughs> Two and one to Wheeler. Here, here's what I think you should do next year for the the burger eating contest. You know the Mex burger that has the jalapenos on it. Mm -hmm. Make 
that, make, make that, that part of the competition. There was no accoutrements on the on the burgers. They ate them just plain. With the lump. They wash it down with water. It had big things of water, and they would the they guys that know what they're doing. They dunk them. Oh, oh, that's gross. just gross. It I'm is. Sorry. Well, it's <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's the two two from Hamels and Wheeler takes a call third strike. First strike out of the game for Hamels. Now you're a Queens kid. You got to be a White Castle guy in your heyday. Not what only, was your number? Not only am I a Queens kid, but I had a a, a a White Castle about two blocks from where I grew up, corner of Union Turnpike and Parsons Boulevard. It's not there anymore, but you know my mom was not big on yeah, allowing yeah. us to eat there. But every once in a while, and you know, 12, really? 16 at a time, yeah. I still indulge, indulge every once really? in a while. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. You do? Oh, yeah, every once in a while. I think there's one on North. Maybe twice a year. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of them over in Jersey, too. Yeah. So in the winter, when I'm going to do the Seton Hall games, oh, stop, stop off on Route 17. There you go. Yeah. Here's Eric Young, who flied out to center his first time up. Well, Cole Hamill's trying to find a rhythm. He had a very rough first inning. You know, last night the Phillies won 13 to 8. It was the highest scoring game in the five year history of City Field. 21 runs. It had never been done before. And this game off to a, an offensive start as well with two pretty good pitchers on the mound. And you wonder if that's the hot weather or just circumstance. We did see last night. We saw it with uh, the ball ugly hit. And we saw it again with the ball Rollins hit in the first inning today. The ball carries so much better when it's hot and humid in this ballpark. Three and one to you. Eric's been doing a terrific job getting on base. 381 on base percentage of the Met. Far higher than what he was doing in Colorado. And taking all the way a strike three and two. Interesting to you that he would be taking all the way on three and one. I thought he was looking to bunt and then called off the jam. Mm -hmm. Lead off hitter. Another fly ball to center field. And another chance for Mayberry with the glasses down. Two out. That. <laughs> Well, the Phillies have lived with great starting pitching over the last half dozen years, but other than Cliff Lee, the top of the line starters for the Phillies have not quite held up their end. Um, if you're a Phillies fan, though, Roy Halladay is about to start throwing off a mound, coming back much quicker than anyone ever thought he would. But Lee has been, well, Cliff Lee. And Hamels had been pitching well his last three starts, but. Off to a rough start so far today. Daniel Murphy put him in that position, doubled down the right field line to get the Mets started in the first, then stole third and came in with the first run. Murphy now with 11 stolen bases. That's a new career high for him. I think what we've seen with the Mets and their running game is they have really picked their spots well. They've found the pitchers who are not adept at holding runners, slow to the plate, and they've really tried to take advantage of those situations. Broken bat grounder foul one and two. That's what I've seen Murph do a lot. Just kind of take that swing and kind of wave at it. Just kind of make contact. I'd like to see him drive more. But you know he's got 40 RBI here, and we got what 70 games left in the season. Murph can conceivably drive in 80 runs in a, in a 75, certainly within range. Coming from a number two hitter, that's. Uh, that's a lot of RBIs for a season. Well, I think also with Murph, and you know, obviously he's swung the bat well enough to have a 10 game hitting streak right now. And he grounds this one to shortstop, and Rollins with a long throw to make and rough stretches to get it. Side retired. 303 on base percentage for Murph. Hitting second of the order. You'd like to see that a little higher. 3 1 Mets after two.
Collins accounted for the one third pitch of the game. He hit over the fence in right field. Well, the Phillies have taken seven of ten from the Mets this year, and you see some of the reason why in those numbers. The big hitters for the Phillies have had big years against the Mets, especially Michael Young and Ryan Howard, who's now disabled. Whereas for the Mets, other than David Wright, their big hitters have not performed well against the Phillies. Rollins home run in the first inning was his 45th career leadoff home run. He's now fourth on the all time list. He had been tied for fourth with Brady Anderson broke that tie. Ricky Henderson of course has the all time record 81 career leadoff home runs. And growing up in Oakland. Nobody was more important as a baseball idol to Jimmy Rollins. Than Ricky Henderson saw Ricky Henderson playing the celebrity softball game on Monday. He went deep and he did the full Ricky around the bases, the picking, the the hopping, did he the make spinning. It to the, did he make it to the first base dugout? Uh, almost, <laughs> <laughs> almost. That's the thing about Ricky. You know, people concentrate on the stolen bases. They concentrate on the on base percentage. You forget sometimes just what a good home run hitter Ricky was as a leadoff hitter. A home run hitter. Um, he was also a guy that when he wanted to could be as good as any left fielder you could see. He didn't throw great but uh, you know his great speed of course and agility he could make some unbelievable plays. Rollins takes a strike. Three and two. Well Ricky had his days. It's uh, he still he's uh, sculpted from the gods. He still is in perfect shape. And Rollins oh. down on strikes. High hard one from Wheeler for his third strikeout. Well, he's been coming right after the hitters. It's a similar pitch that Cole Hamill struck out on. You can see from this view, the ball just explodes up in the strike zone, and Rollins couldn't stay back. So Wheeler's fan three, one out on the third. Michael Young coming up. Let's check in with Kevin Burkhart. Kevin? Amazing the little minutiae a good coach can pick out to help a player get better. Bob Guerin, of course, the former catcher, knows all about that craft, that's for sure. And he told me that he thinks that Anthony Recker has grown leaps and bounds behind the plate defensively this year. And for a little thing that I think most of us would certainly overlook, I know I would, said earlier on spring training and catching some bullpens, Recker dropped some balls. And he stood next to him during those bullpens and realized that his eyes did not track the ball the last foot and a half into the glove. He said I just kind of watched him subtly and noticed you know he would catch the ball but his eyes weren't totally following it into the glove and so after he played the first spring training game have some drop issues and I brought it up to him he had no idea so we worked on it went down to the cage and basically he would just catch and I would just stay there and watch his eyes and made sure he was tracking and he said you know it's not a type of situation you don't want your whole head moving towards the glove but you do want your eyes to finish it into the glove he thinks that has helped him greatly. Well, the Mets had a catcher in spring training a few seasons ago. Kelly Stinnett was that the catcher, and he would concentrate the first week on not squinting. Oh, curveball got away from Wheeler, and Young gets hit in the back. And the Phillies have a one-out base runner. Just the second batter Wheeler is hit in the major leagues. Now this ball just got away from him. A curve. You're going to take one. That's the place to take it. Um, he would work on. Not squinting and not closing his eyes. A lot of catchers still close their eyes. He wanted to watch the ball right into the glove, so I'm sure that's what Garen and Recker were working on. The other area that I know Bob worked very hard with Recker in spring training on is framing, especially at the bottom of the strike zone. There are techniques that catchers can use to make sure that they can catch a ball so that the glove is turned in a way that it looks like a strike, even if maybe it's an inch low. And that's something that John Buck and Bob Guerin helped teach record during the spring. It's a, it's a beautiful craft. Uh, you know, they call boxing the sweet science. Well, catching, there's a lot of nuances to doing it properly and correctly. And, and the position of the glove just to the umpire's sight can look like it's an inch or two higher than it really is. Chase Utley grounded out to Satin his first time up. And the changeup in the dirt, one on one. 
You know, Gary, a couple things on that note. First of all, talking with Gary in this spring, he said that Travis Darno is actually tremendous at that. He, has, he said he has a special wrist action where he could take a really low pitch and kind of frame it like a strike. He said like no catcher he's ever seen before, which I thought was a pretty high compliment. He was raving about him this spring. The other thing I'll get to after the pitch. Well, maybe I'll get to it now. It brings me back to this chat we had with Sandy Alomar Jr. He was such a wealth of knowledge when he was here. Talked about the elbow being kind of a joystick. And what I mean by that is instead of kind of fishing with the glove with balls out of the zone, you use the elbow to kind of move the glove around. The elbow leaves the zone, but the glove always remains kind of near the zone. So it kind of tricks the home plate umpire, if you will. Or at least guides him in the right direction. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Best catcher I ever uh, threw to before Gary Carter was a guy named Mike Fitzgerald who was ended up being traded to the Montreal Expos in that big trade to get Gary and he had an ability on the low pitch to anticipate that the batter was not going to swing at it and he would catch it about two to three inches in front of him and that would keep the ball from being caught lower than it really was. He was just amazing. Toward the hole and Utley's got a base hit. Young goes to second and pulls in there. So Chase Utley, who had two hits last night, has his first in this game. And the Phillies' fourth hit off Wheeler. You know, Keith, I'm, just, I'm sorry, Keith. I didn't mean to oh, interrupt. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Kevin. No, I was just curious on the thing that Garen was talking about, about the eyes following the ball into the glove. Have you ever known of a hitter that kind of looked away the last, you know, few inches and didn't follow the ball to the bat? Have you ever heard of that hitting-wise? Well, you better keep your eye on the ball. Yeah. And definitely, I mean, that's the key to hitting. You can't, you pull your head, you're in big trouble. So, uh, no, Kev, I mean, you're going to have success. Eyes on the ball. That's baseball one oh, hitting 101. Here's Dominic Brown, who fouled out to Wrecker his first time. And a sinker in for a strike. Guy we, play, guy we played against, uh, Pete Rose, most hits in the game. He used to watch the ball if he wasn't swinging right into the catcher's glove. Mm -hmm. Darren Ruff, the on deck batter. Wheeler had traffic in the second inning, worked around a couple of hits. A hit batsman and a single here in the third. And now facing the the hottest hitter in the Phillies order in Dominic Brown. Here's the 0-2. And the curveball balloons outside. One and two. Hasn't had much command of that curveball so far. Well, the pitch to get Dominic Brown on, he's incredibly quick inside, but down. He's very much like Ryan Howard. Anything letters high inside is going to get him to swing through the ball. He has a slight uppercut. That is his Achilles heel. And that's where he tries to go, but he missed high two and two. And there's the battle, right? He lays off the pitch that you were trying to get him out on. That's probably why he's having such an outstanding season. Big spot here for Wheeler with the tying runs on base in a three to one game. Two and two to Dominic Brown. And he laces that one foul. Miller making more use of his changeup here, second time around the batting order against the left hand hitters. Well, they've got the two fastballs, Ronnie, that they make him throw. Uh, well, one fastball to the left handers. I'm talking about lefties, yeah. where it runs away from them. That's the one fastball I least like. I like when he's over the top with the zing. If he's going to throw that ball that runs away, throw it on the on two inches from the outside corner. He jams Brown there. Infield fly rule called. The batter is out. And Quintanilla squeezes it two away. My feeling if he needs a strikeout, Ronnie's throwing that pitch that runs away from left handers. He throws it around three inches or two inches on the strike zone on the outside corner, outside part of the plate, and it runs off the plate bad, try to get a guy to chase. But if you throw it for a strike, it starts in the middle, it's on the outside corner. That's a good pitch to hit for a left hand hit. It, it runs right along your bat as you're swinging. And you can extend your hands yep. and get it. That's what Rollins hit for the home run. That's what Utley hit for the base hit to right field. So now two out and two on. And the rookie first baseman, Darren Ruff, will stand in. Ruff struck out his first time up. And 
Wheeler threw the fastball by him, nothing and one. Delman Young would be next. Ruff getting a chance to play with Ryan Howard on the sidelines. Ruff's going to turn 27 next week, so he's not a, a, a raw kid. He's a college kid. He went to Creighton. Kind of in the same situation that Ryan Howard was, in that he was stuck behind an older player, and Howard didn't get an early start coming out of college. Remember, he was stuck behind Jim Tomey and right. had to wait his turn, and Ruff has kind of been in the same spot. Now, they tried to squeeze Ruff in by playing him in the outfield when they brought him up last year. But didn't, didn't work out. No. Yeah. More kind of like a Lucas Duda type playing left field. Young at second, Utley at first with two down. Two and one to Ruff. Hi. Darts in for a strike, two and two. A little helicopter for a strike. But when it's a two one count and Ruff seen all fastballs. You can get away with that little slider that stays over the middle of the plate. And also, Wheeler's hardly thrown his slider so far today. Nice time to double up, to tell you the truth, with that slider. Got him with a high fastball. Wheeler strikes out rough for the second time, and for the second straight inning, the Phillies strand two. Now the Mets will go back to work in the bottom of the third. David Wright set to lead off for the Mets. Right in the Mets, up three to one in the third. From All Star Week, you and Cespedes hitting him in the upper deck of the home run derby. Tom Seaver's first pitch on Tuesday. Matt Harvey's first two innings, or the eighth inning, and Mariana Rivera going to the mound and getting the adulation of the fans. Text five six eight one two and let us know what your moment was. There's a lot of great choices there. I have mine. I don't know about you. Then there was the week long David Wright tribute. That was pretty good too. David Wright, that was like having a barbecue at your house and no one leaves for three days. I mean, that was a, a tough slog in a great way. Matt Harvey starts tomorrow for the Mets in the final game of this series against Cliff Lee. Yeah, two uh, great pitchers, strike throwers, good athletes, good hitters. I mean, it's going to be interesting to watch tomorrow. And it's quite good bobblehead day. I'm going to be happy to make a bobblehead day for for a change. Save me one. I'm not working tomorrow, would you? <laughs> so you'll be sitting in the stands. 
<laughs> yeah. No. David Wright leads off. Mm. That's the best change up Hamels has thrown mm. so far today. There it is. I think Dwight's going to be here, right? He's doing all the, a few things, right? I'm sure he wouldn't miss a Harvey start anyway. <laughs> That's right. Mm. David hits one well to center, but right there is Mayberry. One away. He got under it. You saw the expression on his face. The fastball up and over the middle. So one out of nobody on now. Marlon Buried, who drove in the first mid run with a base hit to left on the first pitch he saw from Powell. So that's 14 RBIs in his last 10 games for Bird, who's now driven in 55 for the season. It is a remarkable story that Marlon Bird is writing. A season of failure and let's face it humiliation as well. Released twice suspended for 50 games. Just hoping to make a major league roster and not only has he become an important player for this team he's become. The cleanup hitter. The RBI leader. And he's now in the top 10 in the National League in slugging percentage. Who had that on their radar when the year began? It's critical uh, to this team. You know, I was commenting in spring training, Marlon was always the cleanup hitter, saying from where he had come from and now hitting cleanup in spring training. Well, it's not spring training anymore. He's hitting cleanup the regular season. Remember when the season began, if you look at some of the top performing home run hitting outfielders in baseball this year. And Marlon Bird in that group with a much more highly regarded septet. When spring training began and there were all the questions about the Mets outfield and you know you didn't know where anybody would play. And Terry Collins said publicly that Bird would get the first shot at playing right field every day and it raised a lot of eyebrows because of where Marlin had come from last season. But you know, Terry knew what his track record was knew what he had done in Mexico during the winter to try and get himself back to a major league job and he hits another shot and Bird is two for two. Brown tracks it down and he holds Marlin to a single nicely done by Brown. But Bird is aboard for the second time. Well, it turned out Terry was absolutely right. Not only did he get the first shot, but hard to dislodge him. Well, Marlon still has a quick hand. My only surprise, because uh, I've seen Marlon perform at a high level before, was was he going to be able to do it every day? Was he going to be an everyday player? And uh, that, to me, has been the surprise. Here's Josh Satton who reached on a walk his first time up, which jacked his on base percentage up to 487. Can I ask you guys a question? Go ahead, Kevin. Well, there's obviously a lot of hot talk about Bird in the trade department now with the Mets get rid of him, what it would take. Why can't they pencil him in for next year as part of the solution? Well, I, I there's uh, Bird gets picked off and Ruff's throw Safe. and a close play. Oh. Ronald's got the tag down in time. Mark Wagner with the call, one three six on the caught stealing. That's like one of those plays, like a double play. The throw beats you. They're going to call you out. I thought he got his foot in. And he did. Clearly safe. Well, that's clearly a case that Jimmy Rollins wanted no part of getting his body in front of Marlon Bird sliding in there. And of just a swipe tag. Well, just to, to get back to uh, to Kevin's question, I, I think there are two things involved. One is that you don't want to wait a year too long you'd rather sell high if you're going to sell yeah. and two is it depends on what you can get right it's not about trading Marlin right. it's who they some organization is willing to give up Hot. and if they're not willing to give up enough then of course you, you'd invite him back for next year or see what happens in the offseason 
I don't think you should be in an all fired rush to trade Marlon Byrd. After all, it's not like you're paying him a ton of money. It's not a salary dump. It's a matter of can you acquire somebody who's going to be a big piece of your future. Conversations usually happen like this. Well, we have our eye on this guy. If you're willing to part with your highest pitcher who pitches in single A, we'll make the trade. We're willing to part with it. There you go. That's yeah. how Zach Wheeler became a Met. And Syndergaard also mm -hmm. on the other side with Toronto. That's how Ron Darling became a Met. That's true. Right. Did you come over with uh, Walt Terrell? Yeah. Satin down on strike, second strikeout for Hamels. And yeah, the Mets are done at the bottom of the third, on to the fourth. Wheeler back to the mound with a 3 1 lead. Nissan.com today. We're back on Picks 11 tomorrow for the final game of this series with Matt Harvey on the mound. Then the Braves come in for four games starting on Monday night. Mets then go to Washington and Miami, including that day night doubleheader next Friday in D.C. We're on two different networks that day. It might be confusing. We'll have to change in between games. Have one of those hats that you have. Uh, well, down in Washington, probably. Behoove us to change between games anyway. You're saying it might be a tad, a tad warm? Yes. I love that view, by the way. Yeah, me too. I think that's the reason why so many people maybe don't go to their seats and just stand there and watch the game from there. It's great. That's uh, from the Shea Bridge, right? Yeah. And the terrace in right? front of it. Maybe we should do a game from out there one of them. That would be great. That's great. Right on the, the front row of the terrace there, right about the bullpen. People right behind us. You could. Uh, it's a great spot. You, you could heckle the relievers. We could. We might get heckled <laughs> ourselves. Well, Don't worry about it. I'm sure that's true. <laughs> Here's Delman Young as we lead off the fourth inning. Young single to right his first time up. Zach Wheeler's given up four hits in the first three innings, but the only run came on a leadoff home run by Jimmy Rollins. As Wheeler was able to tiptoe through the tulips the last two innings. Only downside is that his pitch count is a lot higher than he'd like it to be. And Delman Young seems to get a base hit every time up. Three hits last night, two more today. Well, the Phillies have their their fifth hit. Pretty much the same pitch. You got a base hit the right field his first time up, back in the second. You know what Delman Young uh, does? He's a very uh, intelligent hitter. He knows exactly that he's not going to get a lot of pitches in. Off, uh, off Wheeler, they're going to be away. It looked like he was just going that way the entire time. So now Mayberry, who's single to center his first time up. And what pop 
steps away from Wrecker, but no advance. It's not so oppressively hot today. It's her first Mets game. She's taken in the sights. One and one to Mayberry. And that fastball just missed. Two and one. Carlos Ruiz waits on deck. Two and two. The Phillies with their win last night vaulted over the Nationals into second place in the National League. East. So still six and a half games behind the Braves. But they also moved above 500 for only the second time this season. They're game over. They've never been two games over this year. They're in their best stretch of the year, having won 10 of their last 14. And trying to prove to their general manager in the 11 days before the trading deadline that they are in it. WCGB. Oh, you notice the Braves right now from the Braves standpoint they they won last night in uh, right at the White Sox. They're in a position right now if they get hot they can shake the whole division get a big lead. So you really want to put from a team standpoint it's like hey guys let's go let's let's get a run together. And Washington's been sputtering all year. You keep waiting for the Nats to make a move yep. but their offense just has never been able to put it together at least not to this point. Braves put a streak together, they can just blow this division out. Three and two to Mayberry with Young at first and nobody out. He's not going. And he oh, struck him out. Good one. Slider gets Mayberry. Five strikeouts for Zach Wheeler. Best slider by Wheeler so far. Had a little downward tilt on that ball as opposed to going straight across the strike zone. You know, and as we talked about the National League yesterday, Gary Ron, uh, with the Central Division being so competitive, really the top three teams in the National League, it doesn't look like you know, wild card's going to come out of the West or the East, and it's going to be the division, the winner of the division is going to go forward in the playoffs. Well, when the Phillies talk about whether they're in it or not, that'll be a big part of the consideration. You know, if the wild card were more present as a possibility that might influence Ruben Amaro's decision on whether to cut bait or whether to go forward this year. So all three teams in the central could make the playoffs. Right now if the season ended they would. Kid today with the ice backhand stop out at second Murphy with a turn for the double play. Omar Quintanilla with a gem on the backhand to start the 6-4-3 double play and get Wheeler through the inning. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Dodge. Take advantage of great summertime deals at the Dodge Summer Clearance event going on now.
lead. All the scoring in this game came in the first inning. Cole Hamels has been trying to settle in after a very rough first. Zach Wheeler had to throw a lot of pitches to get through the first few innings. Another hot day in New York. Maybe the last one of the heat wave. Get some thunderstorms. Rain, rain later today. It's supposed to be a little Canadian air coming in from the north here. <laughs> Canadian air. <laughs> I am so glad <laughs> to be out of the role of staff meteorologist. Yeah, well, I'm so glad that Keith has taken over <laughs> that job. We get any more Canadian air, we might have to take it over again. Lagaris hit a bloop single to right to drive and run his first time up and takes the cutter low and inside from Hamels. Remember, with Michael Young all the way back, we've seen Lagaris in the past uh, lay a bunt down to get a base hit, maybe start the inning. And Hamels gets the outside corner one and one. Well, both pitchers giving up runs in the first inning. Looks like Hamels kind of settling in on his start here. Their own banner day. Well, there's the career of Cole Hamels. Of course, he had the spectacular postseason for the Phillies and they're. World Championship year. And another base hit for Lagaris. Chased down by Brown. Lagaris takes a hard turn and holds it first. So Juan Lagaris, after two hits last night, two more hits today. Very nice. Little cutter in. He stayed nice and level and got the barrel out. Very nice. Good balance. Lagaris continues to take advantage of his opportunities. Here's my question. How much would Lagaris have to hit in order to make it worthwhile to play him every day? We know what he can do defensively. So how much does he have to hit to make himself an everyday player? Well, you got a leadoff guy. We're going to say in terms of Young being the left-hander and the leadoff hitter. He, I don't think he's suited for a two hole hitter. I think he's more of a middle of the order guy. Maybe be, get him in a seven hole. And then if he improves, move him up the food chain. Uh, shoot, would you take 280 from him, Gary? 70 RBIs? Oh, would you? In a heartbeat. I, I think. Uh, Record drives run down the line, but fell. I mean, he's I, a potential gold glover in center field. I think yes. if he hit 255 and had some damage. And would hit well with runners in scoring position. Get on base. He's got some speed. Uh, do some of the little things. I think uh, you could definitely live with him down in the order. That's how good his glove is. I mean, he's going to have to get on base a little more. He's drawn four walks yeah. all season. But that's, I think, something that he might be able to adjust to in time. It's so early to make an assessment yeah. on, on, on Juan. And he's doing terrific. I mean, he is so far what the Mets in spring training thought they would get from Matt Dendecker right he's that tremendous center fielder who you don't know how much he's going to hit of course Dendecker's a left hand batter but he's gotten the opportunity because Dendecker got hurt broke his wrist at the end of spring training and had just gotten back to action and he's so far taken advantage of it and Improved offensively as the year has gone along despite limited chances, and I think that's what's so impressive so far. Record grounds one foul. Well, I just think, you know, I always felt the seventh position in the order is just so it doesn't get enough respect. I mean, Ray Knight hit seventh for us. It's a you got an eighth hitter hitting behind you, so you've got to have a guy that can handle the bat, has a good eye at the plate, yeah. and it's got to be an RBI guy. It's nice if you can be an RBI guy in that seven hole because those five, six. Four, five, six hitters get on base too. So my feeling is, Juan is a line drive hitter. Goes the other way, he can become a much better hitter than 250, Ronnie. Yeah. And if you get 70 RBIs out of a seven hole, that is productive. Record down on strikes. Third strikeout for Hamels. One down in the fourth. I think you're right about he could be a better than a 250 hitter. I'm saying that if he hit 250 with a little damage, he plays for me. Well, I think right now he's getting mostly exposed to left handed pitching, which is helping him. Um, right now it's pretty much a strict platoon with yeah. he and, and Newen Heights in center field. 
And I guess the next question then is it's July the 20th. You're trying to figure out who is going to be part of a winning program going forward. Would it make sense for him to get more exposure as the year goes along to see whether he can hit at that level in order to be productive enough to be an everyday player. Well, you still got the issue of do you want to give new more exposure. You got two young guys out there. So it is a, a bit of a dilemma. It's a nice problem to have. Well I, I think that Lagaris uh, has proven and not yesterday notwithstanding I think it was just a uh, you know an off game for Kirk. He's done nothing but uh, impress out in center field. But uh, uh, Ligaris is just a step above uh, as far as a uh, center field play. And um, you know I think once in a while you do have to see Ligaris against the tough right handed pitchers. The starting pitchers like a, a Strasburg. You know is he over his head against a, a pitcher like that. Two and one to Quintanilla and it goes back to what we were talking about a couple of innings ago. About. Marlon Bird. Now Marlon is having a fantastic season, but I want to find the right way to phrase this. Are you doing your future a disservice by not playing Lagaris and Newenheis every day? You know what I mean? I, I mean, I know Marlon's having a fa fabulous year. He's been a huge part of the success the Mets have had recently, but in some ways. Would the Mets as an organization be better off clearing that spot for younger players if only to try and find out who's going to be a part of your future. I, I think in a vacuum uh, that's a, a, a way to think about it. But uh, playing for Tony La Russa used to say you have to put the people on the field to give you the best chance to win that day. And Marlon Byrd is part of that mix right now. Um, if he's not in time uh, being if, if someone wants him and desires Marlon in such a way that they offer the Mets someone that they really want in, you know at the major league or minor league level and Marlon is moves along then yes I think you put the young guys out there and play him every day and I think you um, Sandy's looking at this situation listen this team he's looking to retool this team and get some youth here and my feeling is and this is my opinion is that he's playing Bird? Obviously, Bird has been so extremely productive. But also, I think looking in terms of keeping Marlins happening, Marlins might drive in a hundred runs. And you get into August, and the team needs a bat. Pirates need a bat. You're going to get something that's going to put the pieces together for the future. And Rome wasn't built in a day. Quintanilla drives one of the gap in left center. Mayberry gets over and makes the grab. Well, moving away from Mayberry, but he's able to run it down for the second out, and Lagaris goes back to first. I mean, how many times, Gary and Ronnie, have you seen players come up that just get this kind of play like Lagaris and Newenheis is, and there's the play, and you can watch the replay there of that catch, where you're just kind of nursing them along, getting their feet wet in the big leagues, and then the opportunity comes where they can play every day, and, he, and you feel they're ready for it. So, um, I just think there's more to it. I mean, this is a team. I feel that Sandy can get a make uh, make trades like he did with uh, oh, Beltron. Beltron, of course, last Dickie. year with Dickey, Syndergaard pitching well. I really think that is, and this is my opinion, uh, is Sandy's focus. If he can get young players almost ready or or major league ready, he's going to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, they're bluffing in a bunt with Young playing back at third. Well, it makes for fascinating conversation. I like the direction the team's going, to be honest with you. I really do. Wheeler out on strikes. Hamels picks up his fourth strikeout. And we head on to the fifth with the Mets up three to one.
Ford dealers for summer spectacular deals. Call Star Star Ford and Y from your mobile device. And as we go to the fifth inning, Kevin Burkhardt is standing by with a Mets mainstay. Uh, a true legend here uh, with the Mets, Gary. Luke Gasperi is here, who is a, an absolute gem. I've had the privilege of knowing him for the seven years I've been here. Been a Met usher since 1964. Uh, but, of course, being honored today as a veteran of the game, uh, fighting in the Battle of the Bulge, winning a Purple Heart, getting a Purple Heart, I should say, excuse me. And we're, Luke is a great personality, Gary. We had him on when Chase Stadium closed. And, Luke, I remember that interview because I asked you, are you going to go on to City Field and keep working? And you said, yes, I have to because my wife eats a lot, if you remember that. that <laughs> oh, yes, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife's sick today, though, unfortunately. She couldn't well, be she, here. She does eat pretty good. Are you going to say hello to her and be, be oh, nice yes. to this? Hello, Madeline. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Luke, I'll tell you, you know, first of all, uh, thank you for everything you've done for this country. Can you take us back and, and take the fans at home watching to that time? I guess late in 1944 when you're on the battlefield and what that is like and what it took determination wise to get through that and, and do what you did. Well the first thing you have to believe believe in God and in fact in 1944 we fought two wars. We fought the Germans and we fought the weather. The weather was very very bad. We had the worst winter in 1944 in the longest time in Europe. You remember how cold it was? Do you remember how cold it was? Oh no, but a lot of a lot of boys froze to death, a lot of army fellas. A lot of a lot of us got frozen feet, which I did too. Oh, no! So this, you know, and this is war. Take everything in. But I happen to be a lucky one to survive, and here I am talking to Kevin. What what are you most proud of? serving for your country and doing what you did today when you tell stories and remember those times what are you most proud of i'm proud to be an american and i'm proud that i worship my flag till i die and this is my country and i love it well uh, it is great to have you on here today and i said you've been a veteran you've been on our air a couple times before can i transition to baseball 64 you've been with this team through thick and thin Tell me about a couple of your best memories about being here and meeting the people and, and, and experiencing Mets baseball. Well, the one good memory I had when uh, President Nixon come out of the out of the uh, out of his uh, home plate, and I helped him come down one step onto the field, and luckily I had a ball in my pocket, and I asked him, President, can you sign the ball for me? And he said, yes. So I took my ball, and I gave it to him, and he signed it. And I still have it home. That was one memory. You know, uh, Luke, you um, you are a fun guy. You know, I walk around, I see you. You're always pleasant and, and laughing, and we laugh. Guys, I have to tell you this, because be, between the break there, Luke was putting me up to this question. So, so I'll ask it. You told me to ask it. Luke, what's tougher, uh, serving in World War II or being married 65 years? Well, my God, I tell you what. I think 65 years is the worst. <laughs> Today, me, tomorrow, you. <laughs> Luke, you are a gem. Thanks for everything you've done for us, and it's great to see you here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Porkhart. Uh, Luke Esperi, guys, really uh, one of the greats around here at City Field. Let's go back to you. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Luke is, he's one of a kind. Isn't yeah, he? isn't he? Boy. One of the uh, absolute gems, and, you know, people wonder sometimes, and they say, what? You know what binds a franchise together? People like Luke yeah. Gasparri. That's you know. That's what it's all about. Wheeler has found some more trouble here in the fifth inning. Back to back base hits by Hamels and Rollins. And now Michael Young is up with the tying runs on base. And the Mets will get the bullpen started. With Wheeler up to 86 pitches on the day. And he dents the outside corner with a fastball. Young has grounded to short and been hit by a pitch. Show for one. Well, the Phillies have had base runners in every inning against Wheeler. They stranded two in the second, two more in the third. And now they've got the first two men on in the fifth. Seven hits now against Wheeler. A ball and a strike to Young. Four two strikes. You see Chase Utley on deck. Michael Young is a middle of the plate hitter in. After two strikes, he looks away. Come on, come on. Well, we 
We saw him hit a three run homer last night against Greg Burke on a first pitch that he pulled to left field. I just found out as you look at record talking with a, really the probably the first real jam that Wheeler's in. Luke down there served at the 87th Acorn Division, which was part of the Third Army, which was General Patton's army. So if he was at Battle of the Bulge, he was the rescuing army. But Patton's army was diverted north to relieve the, the soldiers at Bastogne during the Battle of the Bulge. Gonzalez Hermen up in the Mets bullpen. Fifth inning with a lead. You see it all the time. It's the most difficult inning for any young pitcher. For the first time, probably in the game, you're looking forward as opposed to the present. If I get through this inning, I could get a win. Not to throw his 90th pitch, and it's off the corner. Now he's behind on Young, three and one, with Chase Utley on deck. So it's a major moment for Zach Wheeler. It's a fastball hitting count right here. Runners will not be in motion with Hamels on the, the lead runner. Be shocked if they run him. There's a strike for him too. Good outside corner fastball, RJ. Perfect. Do not have to change the game plan. Throw the same pitch if you can. The Phillies are 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position tonight. Today, coming into the day, the opposition hitting 148 against Wheeler with runners in scoring position. And a big one here on 3 2 to Young. And a late swing foul. 2,325 career hits for Michael Young. Over 1,000 RBIs, lifetime 301 hitter. Wheeler again with a 3 2. Mm. Ball four, and the bases are loaded. First walk given up by Zach. Dan Warthen heads to the mound. Crisis point for Wheeler. Two run lead. Bases loaded, nobody out, and the three and four hitters coming up. What was that pitch selection, Ronnie, right there? It was hard to tell because I think um, he, he kind of cut it off there, Keith, meaning that it looked like he aimed the ball as opposed to let it go. Gary, you mentioned that number 148 coming into the game, the average against. Wheeler with runners in scoring position. Well, this is going to be his toughest test. He's got a lead. How can he finagle his way out of this by giving up maybe just a run? Well, he's got Chase Utley to contend with here. Utley single to right his last time up when Wheeler had him behind on the count. Hamels led off the inning with a base hit. He's at third. Rollins singled. He's at second. Young walked. He's on at first with nobody out. And Wheeler trying to hang on to a precarious three to one lead. Got to be aware of the runners in scoring position. He gets overly aggressive. Squeezed him there. That was Just a tough missed. one. He needed that strike. That was a good pitch. Slider. Good choice. Nice pitch. Should have been a strike. Again, you're working with a, a rookie home plate umpire, Will Little. Our first look at him behind the plate, and everybody's been trying to figure him out today. Mm -mm. And Rector has to stop that one. 2 0. Oh. Well, two curveballs missed. That is a hitter's delight. Bases loaded. Tight ball game. Big at bat for a hitter here. Pitchers miss with two curves. Boy, are you sitting dead red or what? Point in the game where you got to challenge the hitter and you hope Utley pops it up. And Utley lifts it to left. 
Tagging at third is Hamels. Tagging at second is Rollins. So Young properly throws to her third. Hamels comes in with the second Philadelphia run. Utley with the sacrifice fly to cut the Met lead to three to two. Well, he kept the ball away here, Ronnie, so he wasn't going to get hurt. Just a veteran hitter, not trying to do too much, making sure that he got the ball up in the air, and it was plenty deep enough to score the run. 34th RBI for Utley, so now first and second and one out. And Wheeler has a lot more heavy lifting to do with Dominic Brown. Brown came up in the same spot in the third inning, first and second and one out, and he popped up to short. So he's 0 for 2 on the day. Rollins the tying run at second. Michael Young at first with one out. Michael and Delman and Eric all in the field at the same time. It's like we're forever young. <laughs> there you go. Wrecker sets up away and Brown takes that one down. And again, it's 2 0. Dominic Brown. Just one off the pace in the National League home run race. Had that great stretch late May, early June when he hit 11 in a 15 game span. And he hit another one last night. Wheeler behind 2 0. It takes a look at Rollins. Nobody covering. Wheeler again close to 100 pitches with one out in the fifth inning. He's thrown as many as 109. Who came at his start in Chicago against the White Sox. And he's fallen behind on Brown 3 0 with Darren Ruff on deck. So the question might arise if he ends up walking Brown here, is he going to get a chance to finish the inning? You have to figure Brown's going to have green light here. And he swings and flies one out to center. And Lagaris is there. There's a king size out for Zach Wheeler. Two out of the inning. As a pitcher, you're like, thank you very much. I had to throw it down the middle. You tried to get big and you popped it up. And he is really flirting with danger here. But he's handled rough his first two times up. Well. Miller has continued to excel with runners in scoring position. He's got one more big out to get. Ruff's been up twice and struck out both times. Just heard an unbelievable statistic on Dominic Brown. It's the 23rd time a pitcher's fallen behind him 3 0. He has swung on 3-0 10 of those 23 times. Well, that's look, an enormous number. You look no further than the manager Charlie Manuel. He's the one that's given him the hit sign. Yeah, but just because you have the hit sign doesn't mean you need to swing. Although he, that pitch was right down right. the middle, he just missed it. I'm just saying in yeah. general that that's that's 43 percent of the time. No, you're thinking 10 percent of the time right. would be a huge number. So Matt Beltron, the Matt that probably swung the most 3-0, yeah. mm -hmm. recent memory. And had some great results with it. Wheeler behind again, 2 0 on Ruff. And he fires a fastball high, and once again he's falling behind 3 0. Well, he's just trying to get through this fifth inning with a lead, but he's taking on water getting there. There's a strike three and one. Pushing toward the end. Three one to Ruff. Strike. Oh boy, that one. Ruff was heading to first. Will Little calls him back. Well, it might not be a strike, but Ruff doesn't have enough time in to argue with the umpire. I think it's down, and I think it's away. 
Not away. Oh, that's a strike. That's that a way. That's a good strike. That's what he's been calling all day. Oh, well. Wow. I did that once to Doug Harvey. Took off his mask and told me to come get it and bump. Runners go 3 2. All four. Yep. Bases are loaded, and now that's going to be all for Zach Wheeler. So he will not get a chance for a victory today. He'll leave with the bases loaded with a precarious 3 2 lead and hope that the bullpen can get the job done. Oh boy. A game that he cannot win but could end up losing. Couldn't get through the fifth for the W. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Infinity Luxury Cars that deliver inspired performance. Zach Wheeler out after four and two thirds. Gonzalez Hairman on to replace him. Wheeler out after four and two thirds, having thrown 106 pitches, and gives way to the rookie right-hander Gonzalez Herman, his fourth appearance and his third in a high-leverage situation. Well, Herman is the bases loaded pitcher for the Mets in the second half, or not even in the second half, twice. <laughs> and now he's come in trying to get this big out against Delman Young, who's got a couple of hits. He worked a hitless low-leverage inning yesterday. Comes in with the bases loaded and two out to face Young, and bounces the first pitch breaking ball. Want to know? Now I always say, as a hitter, when they bring in a reliever with men on base, a tight game, and but you can hurt, you can hurt him. The reliever's coming in cold, and if he throws a breaking ball first pitch and he misses, that is sweet. Although we've seen her men, if he gets behind, he's not afraid to throw the changeup. That's really his best pitch. And Young foul tips the fastball one on one. So you get your fastball and you miss here. It's a tough out right here. This man can hit. John Mayberry on deck. Delman Young two for two tonight. Five for seven in the series. He's gone to right field twice today. Popped up foul and that'll come out of play. And now here men ahead one and two. Her man made his debut in the major leagues just eight days ago. He's been under a lot of fire in a short period of time. Trying to get one huge out here in the fifth inning. One two. Too high with a fastball. 
I've seen a lot of pitchers come up from AAA that are relievers for the Mets that have not been intimidated, but a little shy when they've come to the major leagues. For men so far, uh, walks the walk. We'll see if the, the results are there. Two and two to Delman Young. Struck him out. Well, he got him with a change up last night. He gets him with a change up again today. And he protects Zach Wheeler by stranding three. Big out for Herman halfway through 3 2 New York. Terry Collins pulling Zach Wheeler after four and two thirds, and that worked out perfectly. Gonzalez here, men came in to get a big out. And you know, you watch the maturation process for Zach Wheeler. Six starts into his major league career. He certainly had high points today, getting himself out of some jams, but also 106 pitches in four and two thirds. Well, I will say, you know, his first start against Atlanta was the perfect storm. It's a team that swings at everything. So he was able to get through that start. Today's start was impressive in the sense that. His fastball location was good. He didn't have a lot on his breaking ball today. His slider was not there. I think he only threw one breaking ball and maybe a handful of changeups, none for strikes. So, fastball command up, breaking pitches not there, especially the slider, his secondary pitch. And uh, so, an uneven start for, for Zach. But, you know, facing a team that's red hot, um, a team that scored 13 runs last night, and a team that worked the pitch count up. They know what they're doing the veteran team. We've seen it a couple of times with Wheeler and we you know we talked about the numbers runners in scoring position as Young rifles one into center field and he's on base for the first time today. So Eric Young gets the Mets started third time around the batting order with the base hit against Hamill. Nice level swing. That's one thing I'll say for for Young who's done a terrific job is both sides of the plate. He's a line drive hitter. He's not going to be a home run guy. Now Murphy, who doubled and scored in the first, grounded out in the second. And you have to think, figure Young's going to be trying to steal a base against Hamels, who's been vulnerable to the steal. He did pick off Marlon Bird and got him on a caught stealing on a bad call in the third inning. Well, Michael Young's in on the, out, uh, on the grass with Murph up, and Murph's not going to bunt at third base. Remember Murph loves that hole between third and short and if I was defending Murph with a particularly with a left hander I would get Rollins over a little more in that hole and I definitely move young deeper. You just drew a line drive. The telestrator it was frozen earlier was fixed. I panicked. I use it so much. <laughs> We gave demonstration to the kids today. Yes. That's the most important part of it. That's right. Gary had to make a group up here of young little leaguers look like. They were very excited to meet you. Well, 
You're only human. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say about Wheeler, we've seen it a couple yeah. of times now. Games where he's had a lot of traffic on the base paths and has been able to minimize the number of runs. It happened in the game in Chicago where he had base runners galore and only gave up one earned run in that start. And it happened again here today. Seven hits, two walks, only two runs. There goes Young. Ruiz with the throw, not nearly in time. So the Mets have their second stolen base of the game. Young steals his 18th of the year. All right, now it's incumbent on Murph to either drive him in or get him over. We're getting in the middle of the ball game here. One run game and see the jump. He just went right from the belt, took a chance. You're not going to throw him out. Murph, Murph has got to do some, some situational hitting here. You want the number one, pull the ball, and drive him in. That is the A game. Secondary, you pull the ball, advance the runner. Murphy extended his hitting streak to 10 games with his first inning double. David Wright waits on deck. has to keep an eye on Young that gives Murph even more of that hole and Hamels misses with the cutter and falls behind three and up. Sometimes you're being so careful yep. to stop the guy from situational hitting that you get behind or even walk him. Now it sounds like a paradox Gary but for the hitter the easiest pitch to pull is the ball away not the ball in. There's a strike. Not surprisingly, Murphy has not swung at a 3-0 pitch this year. Well, he's in the two hole. He's a table setter. Where Dominic Brown's got 24 bombs. Mm -hmm. Interesting to watch Murph after taking that 3-0 pitch. He not not even that pitch, every pitch, he looks up on the board to see the speed of the pitch. I mean he knows the pitch, but to see the speed. Driven to center field, tagging at second is Young. Mayberry runs it down, and Young will easily go over to third base. So it's a productive out for Daniel Murphy, and the Mets have a runner at third with one out. Well, it could very easily have been a base hit. The ball was hit hard. Good at bat, Murph. Without it being a base hit, that's about as good in that bat you can take. I want to go back to what you just said, Ronnie, about him looking at the pitch speed. Keith, what benefit is that? If you've already seen the pitch. I know. Well, how does the. It's how the ball comes out. I've faced guys that throw 88 miles an hour, look like they were throwing 95. I faced guys that throw 95, and in my mind's eye, look like they were throwing 89. Go figure. So it's the, your perception. I don't need it at mile per hour. The left side of the infield is in, but Utley has stayed back at second. Now he's moving in as the pitch is thrown, and right grounds one foul. That was odd. Utley almost appeared like he wasn't ready. So basically, got the middle infielder's halfway chase is what you would consider right there. He's going to come in with the pitch. Here he comes right now. He's creeping. Right is walked and flight out 0 for 1 and he lines one up the middle of base hit and that'll bring in Eric Young. David Wright with an RBI single and it's 4 to 2 New York. 47 RBIs for David Wright. David has been very consistent this season. Steady would be the word. Little cutter in and he likes opens up those hips. That's just good hitting. It was not a bad pitch. He's just done a terrific job this year. I think he's never played better. I really mean that. It's an inning you never would have seen in the beginning of the year. Well, the base hit, stolen base. 
Mets get them over, get them in. They didn't have a leadoff guy who could get on. They didn't have a leadoff hitter who could steal the base. I mean, Eric Young has filled that niche about as well as anybody could possibly have filled it. Marlon Bird already two for two today, twice a single to left. Well, for a left handed pitcher like Camels to give up so many stolen bases, um, he has a tick that he does that allows the Mets runners to know when he's going to first and when he's going home. And that's why that there's been so uh, much uh, aggressive base running by the Mets. There goes right and Hamels picks him off and Ruff makes the throw right on target and Utley with the tag. Well that's the second time now the Mets have run on Hamels and he was able to pick him off. Well Ronnie mentioned earlier that Coles had issues with runners stealing on him this year and he's just got to throw over more Ron. Yeah. Well, what he's doing now to induce the runner to run on him is he's looking home and then throwing the first and the Mets are going on. The first movement. Well, I mean, you mentioned that he had a tick. Is it that he's made an adjustment now? Yeah, he's, he's definitely doing something different than he did before. So the Mets have stolen twice, but they've also been caught twice now. One, three, four, right is thrown out. So they get that run back. One and one to Bird. And Marlin swings mm. over the curveball, one and two. Well, Hamels just six and eleven lifetime against the Mets. He's done better recently, but mm. still compared to his overall mark, it's kind of stunning. It's been a uh, choppy start for him. I'm sure, he's not pleased with it. Strike three called. He gets Bird looking at the changeup. Five strikeouts for Hamels, but the Mets had a run and lead 4 2 after five. To you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance. It's been a big week for this five-year-old ballpark. Close to its first All-Star game, sellout crowds for the home run derby and the All-Star game itself. And now with the Mets back in town, all the rights are here. <laughs> Gonzalez Herman came in to get a huge out with the bases loaded in the fifth inning after Zach Wheeler went the first four and two thirds. Now Herman stays in the face of the lower third of the Phillies batting order Mayberry Ruiz and Hamels and with the Phillies down two runs the Phillies will get their bullpen going. Mayberry is one for two he blooped a single to center in the second and struck out in the fourth. 
Wheeler went four and two thirds, allowed two runs, seven hits, two walks, five strikeouts, a hit batsman, and a home run. His ERA goes up a tick to 3.58. That is J.C. Ramirez, first man up in the Phillies bullpen. And Mayberry first pitch swing pops up the fastball. Wrecker called off by Satin and he puts it away one pitch and one out for Herman in the sixth. Lots of pop ups. So one out and nobody on now Carlos Ruiz. Last time up he hit one in the hole at shortstop and Quintanilla made a terrific backhand stop and started a 6 4 3 double play. Gonzalez Herman, 25 years old, met signed up as an amateur free agent out of the Dominican in 2007. So it has been a long apprenticeship for Gonzalez to get here six years later. And so far, taking full advantage. Remember, he was called up about a month ago and was here for three or four days and never pitched and was sent back down. And then got into that 11 inning game a week ago yesterday in Pittsburgh. Took a loss that day, but impressed nonetheless after some initial jitters, getting a couple of big strikeouts in that inning before giving up a 17 hopper up the middle that ended the ball game. And since then, has been put into a couple of rather dicey situations and handled them well. And he gets Ruiz flailing at the changeup for the second out. Uh, fastball to get ahead, slider to get to 0-2, changeup to put him away. When you have a good one that drops off like that, starts out in the strike zone, it's the element of surprise. Now Lance Nix will bat for Cole Hamels with two out and nobody on. A little surprised. I thought maybe they'd leave Cole in for another inning since there's two out and nobody on. But on a hot day, Take him out after 94 pitches and five innings of work and go to their bullpen. Next pinch hit last night, struck out in the ninth inning. Interesting that Charlie would use his only left hander on the bench mm -hmm. this early with no one on and a power guy. Well, their bench is a big problem right now with with Howard and Revere out of the lineup, so it means Mayberry's playing and. Yeah. They, they have uh, misters. misters like in Arizona. Oh, it's like osmosis. <laughs> it's like a little outdoor air conditioning. <laughs> it keeps the party going. <laughs> Talking about the Phillies bench right now, they're carrying three catchers. They've got uh, Umberto Quintero and Eric Kratz on their bench. They've got 38 year old Johnny McDonald who they just brought aboard as a backup infielder. So they're a little bit limited right now on that bench. One and two now to Knicks. Breckel will go out to speak to her man the umpire rookie umpire will little took a shot there on the foul tip. Two coming to the Knicks. Couldn't get him to go. Two and two. Well, the Mets are carrying 13 pitchers right now. The plan is to bring Justin Turner back from the DL on Monday, which means a pitcher is going to go. And an outing like this for Gonzalez Herman is one where he's trying to make a case that he shouldn't be the guy to leave. Dangerous back there. <laughs> Two in a row.
Tennessee native Will Little. Two two. Just missed. Full count. Gonzalez here man has faced three batters. Retired them all. Struck out two of the three. Change up pitchers. They have got a good one. We'll throw the fastball 2 2 to set up the 3 2 changeup. Let's see that that works with the youngster, Herman. He did, and he struck him out. Third strikeout for Herman. Very impressive. Retiring all four to face him. Herman with a big strikeout. Still 4 2 New York. Ball to picks 11. The legend returns to late night. Arsenio Hall is back and he's bringing the party with him. Don't miss the Arsenio Hall show weeknights at 11 starting September 9th right here on picks 11. Boy Arsenio just disappeared didn't he? Glad he's back. Who said there are no second acts? J.C. Ramirez will take over the pitching for the Phillies as we go to the home sixth inning. He might have disappeared, but he disappeared with some iron. I'll no, tell you that. Well, <laughs> Ramirez start a great start to his career. Went 17 batters without giving up a hit when he was uh, claimed from Lehigh Valley. Got a good arm, good fastball, 90 plus, good breaking ball. Josh Satin will lead off for the Mets in the home sixth. Mets scored three in the first off Cole Hamels, who leaves after five, having given up four runs and seven hits, two walks, five strikeouts on the hook for what could be his 12th loss of the season. J.C. Ramirez, one of the handful of big leaguers who have ever come from the nation of Nicaragua. Satin has walked and struck out today. 0 for 1. Juan Lagares on deck and then Anthony Recker here in the sixth. Juan having himself a nice day. One and two to Satin. Guy Ramirez uh, sneaky fast.
Here's the one two. And it's up and into Satin at 96 from J.C. Ramirez. The first time the Phillies had Cliff Lee when they traded him away to Seattle, Ramirez was part of the package they got back along with Philippe Aumont, who's now back in the minor leagues for the Phillies. Tyson Gillies, a young outfielder. Slider misses and a full count to Satin. Josh is one of those guys where you might as well just start start at three, at three two. And, two. <laughs> and he is an awfully good two strike hitter. League average 173 with two strikes. He's in 300. That's the kind of run that he has been on through his first 63 at bats of the year. Satin leading off in the home sixth inning. 3 2. And he takes mm. a call third strike. Fastball yes, got him looking. We've seen that a, more than a few. I think, I don't think Josh was looking here. I think he thought it was low. That's too close to take. Well, when you take this pitch in the sixth inning, to me it means you haven't been watching the game. Well, well, we talked earlier about. Having a rookie home plate umpire, and you've been watching him all day, and Keith's been watching him all day, and you have to assume that everybody on both teams have been watching him all day because they've never seen him before to get an idea of what his strike zone looks like. Well, it's fine to zone in. I, I can speak from the pitcher's perspective is that where do I go for Will Little? I've never seen him umpire. I'm on the mound right now. Anything down I'm going to get, anything on the outside corners I'm going to get. That's what my concentration is when I have to go. For kind of a money pitch. And I think if you're a hitter, when you go up there, and I'm not saying one, you know, uh, two one or three one, but if you get the three two, you're going to have to expand the strike zone uh, against uh, with Will Little behind the plate. If you don't, you're going to be called out. You know, the way I look at it, it's all about I don't care what umpires call, whether they're high ball, low ball, if they're consistent. And it's a ball that I can get the bat on. That's all I that's all any hitter wants. I think he's done a nice job behind the plate today. But Keith, if you're sitting in the dugout and you're watching and he's been consistently calling that strike low. And strike three called and Lagaris is caught looking at the slider. Will you make that adjustment? Particularly with two strikes and maybe swing at a pitch that you wouldn't ordinarily swing at because he's calling that low strike. I don't think it's that. It's not a pitch that's like mid calf, Gary. It's a borderline knee strike that's very hittable. You know, so go whaling on that low pitch. You know, he's going to know it's going to call it a strike. More importantly, with two strikes, you know, you got to swing at that pitch because he's going to give it to the pitcher and. As long as he's fair and, and as long as he's consistent with it, no gripe. Dutch Rennert was a notoriously low ball umpire. Ronnie knows yeah. that. One of the best umpires in the game. And Dutch would give that pitcher the two inch, three inch low strike below the knee. I had no issue with that. I knew it. It's still a good pitch to hit. Wrecker pops one up into right. Delman Young looking through the sunglasses and he puts it away to retire the sides. So J.C. Ramirez sets the Mets down one two three onto the seventh four to two New York.
innings in the All-Star game. Two shutout innings as the starter for the National League. Matt Harvey makes his first start of the second half tomorrow right here at City Field as he takes on the Phillies ace Cliff Lee in the battle of heavyweights. You see the numbers on the tail of the tape. It's going to be quite a quite a matchup tomorrow on which should be a much more temperate afternoon than we've had the last week. You think about the power pitcher of today Gary. You just don't see him walk anybody. You know they'll have. It used to be if you were three to one strikeout to walk ratio, you were styling. Now it's four, five, six to one ratio from strikeout to walk. And that really is emblematic of what has happened around baseball. Strikeouts keep going up and walks are going down. And it's these young pitchers who can throw hard and throw strikes who are a big part of the reason for that. Well, the change ups, the big pitch, the soup du jour, so to speak, in today's game. They're all being taught that in the minor leagues, and they come up, and everybody loves that combio. Jimmy Rollins hit a home run leading off the game on Zach Wheeler's third pitch. His fifth home run of the year. He's two for three on the day. Gonzalez Herman's still in there. He's already worked an inning and a third in relief. And Rollins takes a fastball for a strike. 2 0 count. 2 0 count right here. Got a fastball up. That fastball that runs away out over the plate. And the ball is carrying in this heat, folks. Ball and a strike to Rollins. Michael Young and Chase Utley to follow. Fourth time around the batting order for the Phillies. Your man so far has faced four batters and struck out three of the four. And Rollins pops up the changeup. And Josh Sutton makes the call. One away. Let's bring you the results of our Chevy text poll. We asked you which was the most. <laughs> Which was your favorite moment from this mm. memorable All Star week? And Matt Harvey's start just edging out Mariano Rivera's final All Star appearance. They were both big moments. Yeah. Matt Harvey will have a lot more All Star appearances given good health. But when Mariano came in to an empty field and both dugouts stood and applauded, and he was moved to tears. That was pretty special. Michael Young takes a strike, and it's one and one. I didn't get to see the whole game, but I, I made sure that I saw Harvey's first inning, and I luckily got home right before Rivera came in, so I got to see both moments. But. Um, Watch out what you wish for a moment for Matt had to be as soon as he threw that first pitch and trout lined it down the right field line for a double. It's like, well, wait a minute. That's right. I'm playing against the, the, the best of the AL. Well, then the other piece to that inning, of course, is he hits Robinson Cano right near the knee. And if if Cano had been injured, can you imagine the civil war that would have broken out in no, this town? You've already got a civil war. But, uh, yeah, it would have been. Even but it would have been a shooting war. That's right. That's right. <laughs> they would have pulled all their ambassadors from the capitals. <laughs> it's indeed. It's the one-two, and Young takes the fastball away. Two and two. Young has been hit by a pitch and walked today. Otherwise, 0 for one. Phillies two runs seven hits the Mets four runs seven hits here men's face five and retired them all. A little housekeeping. Anthony Wrecker. Johnny on the spot. Two two from here men. He couldn't get him to bite on that one three and two. So Young has been watching. Gets so, the two strikes, likes his changeup. Might be different here though with the leadoff hitter Gary. Um, you don't want to take a chance on a, on a changeup maybe out of the strike zone. You might have to be aggressive here. And he missed with the fastball, and Young is aboard. So the first base runner against Herman. Well, this was Tuesday night. Jim Diamond had done his thing. And Mariano got the ovation of a lifetime. 
Three up, three down, if I recall. Well, Rivera got handshakes on that occasion. His final All Star appearance. Gonzalez here, men, will get handshakes for his performance this afternoon. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Infinity Luxury Cards that deliver inspired performance. Scott Rice in for the Mets. We'll be right back. What you can see is an inherited runner stranded has been solid for Rice this year. Left handed batters, you see, that's where his great number is. We should bring up the fact that, just real briefly here, that these, the camera crew out here, they've been out here in this sweltering heat bringing you the best possible coverage of these games. And they're out there in the heat, folks. There they are. Good job, guys. Pitting out, too. Yes, sir. You cool guys as are a the cucumber. Look at that. Yeah. You guys are the best. You got to know what shirt to wear. <laughs> Need that internal air conditioner. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Rice brought in to face Chase Utley, tying run at the plate in a four to two game. Utley is one for two. He drove in a run with the sacrifice fly his last time up in the fifth. Young at first and one out, and Utley first pitch swinging at a pitch in on his hands. And nothing to do with that but foul it off. There we go. Right at the cameraman. Nice back of the head there. They get hazard pay for that. <laughs> Rice pitched last night, worked an inning and a third, retired all four batters he faced. Misses with the off speed pitch. It's one and one. Yeah, that one at bat against Dominic Brown where he hit him, but they ruled that Dominic Brown had swung at the pitch. Uh, Utley, got to be careful with him as Brown's on deck because he will be hit by tons of pitches during the course of a year. Now Utley waves at the slider, one and two. Well, Ludley grounded out against Rice last night. He's 0 for 3 against Scott. Good slider. Nice down tilt. Rice working in back of Gonzalez here, man, who retired five of the six batters he faced. 1 2. That's grounded foul. It's interesting to see. I know Utley's not the same, the injuries. But to see when he came up and uh, how he used the whole field and now at this stage of his career, even before the last three, four years, really become a dead pulled hitter just about practically.
Rice with the one two and up late down on the slider two men down. So Rice comes in and gets Utley for the second out. And it just doesn't look like Chase is picking up the ball out of hand there, Ronnie. Another chase of the slider. Well, Another we'll good one. Yeah, I would have to say this is the best slider I've seen from Rice. This is not a strike, but it starts out as a strike. And it's so uncharacteristic of Utley to be chasing bad pitches. Scott Atchison looking on from the Mets bullpen. You got right hand hitters up behind Dominic Brown. Brown is 0 for 3, popped up twice and flying to center. Batting with Michael Young at first and two out. And Brown takes a strike on the outside. Brown had three hits last night, including a two run homer. Darren Ruff, a right hand hitter on deck, so this is probably Rice's last man. Brown hitting 252 against left handers with five home runs. Rice is the kind of pitcher, he's a sinker ball pitcher, he's got the funky motion, he hides the ball well. It's a hard guy to get a rhythm off of. But watching him over the course of the season, you've really got to make him get the ball up. But a lot of his game is his deception and his motion. He's all arms and legs. Now, where Satin is playing a good seven feet away from the bag, what purpose exactly does that serve? Now they now they've yeah, got him back on the bag. Is that the answer to your question? I guess so. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing now. Well, he's in the way of the runner. You're not allowed to be there. No. I mean, if the runner tries to get back and runs into you, that's so obstruction. They're still uh, talking to him, Terry. I think with a four-two lead, a no. Line drive pull hitter behind him. What you do when you're here, Gare, for me, it just enables me to get out into the hole further because I it's a it's three feet I don't have to cover. You, you follow what I'm saying? You're cheating when you're on the bag, and I used to put my foot in foul territory. Remember, Whitey Herzog right. got me off that. So I've got to go all the way out here. I always wanted to get to the cut in the grass, take that hole away. Now, if I'm cheating in here, it's much easier on my aching body to do that. But you don't have to do it now. Especially when Ryan's out there and not having a good day and then on base. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I would assume at this point in his career that Josh's body is not aching. Right. It's a hot day, though. Trust me, when you're out there and your puppies are barking. And you can only do it on a runner that's not... A, Really a, a sullen base threat. Rolled over and sat in just in the right spot to handle Brown's ground ball. Perfectly placed, <laughs> inning over. <laughs> Seventh inning stretch at City Field. The Mets with a 4 to 2 lead. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls.
Baseball is brought to you by the Smurfs 2 in theaters July 31st. I think it's uh, perfect symmetry that Smurfs 2 is opening on the trading deadline. <laughs> well, I'm getting a little vertigo. Yeah, that, that's Same. a tough shot for me. Ooh, wow, we're a long way up. You know me, I got to sit in the front of the car when we go home after the uh, away game, so. It's quite a city, isn't it? Amazing. It's got a lot of tall buildings, skyscrapers, and everything. <laughs> we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Omar Quintanilla leads off against J.C. Ramirez, who starts his second inning of work. Quintanilla 0 for 2 today, and he pops one foul. Mike Davis has come out on deck to bat for Scott Rice, and then Eric Young here in the bottom of the seventh. That's got three in the first, and that's been enough so far. Cole Hamels went the first five for the Phillies, allowed four runs and seven hits. Zach Wheeler did not go the required five to get a win, so right now it's Gonzalez Hermen who is in line for the win for the Mets. Having gone an inning and two thirds hitless behind Wheeler. One on one to Quintanilla. Well, there was a little bit about where to play, a little miscommunication for Satin, so Tough, who was in charge of the infield. He learned everything from me, see? Not a baby. He's just telling him where to play, how to play behind, how to cheat. Da 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 da. Now, if he's playing off the bag the way we saw him in the last inning, you want him deking back to the bag? No. Remember the way Olerud used to do it? When, yeah, uh, Bobby liked that. BV. Bobby Valentine liked that. And you know what? I, I, that's a lot of baloney. Although it did kind of confuse some, some base runners. Um, to me, it's just, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm cheating around three feet. It enables me to get out further in the hole to take away the hole. Now, I wouldn't want to do it off of a dead pull hitter, left hand dead pull hitter. Um, it would be a guy like Utley, I'd want to take that hole away from Utley. There's ball four, and Kinton is on with a leadoff walk. Mike Davis will come up to pinch hit. And we check in with Kevin. Well, Jeremy Hefner didn't have the start he wanted last night, but clearly he's been real good for the Mets. And off the field, the same. He's done a lot of charity work. He was out there after Hurricane Sandy giving goods and efforts in Rockaway and meeting the people and trying to help out there. And during the All-Star break, he went home to Oklahoma and toured around. Uh, he's been giving to charities back there to help the folks recover from that devastating tornado. I asked him what it was like. He said, you know, I've seen plenty of tornadoes before, and I've seen tornado damage, but the scale of this was incredible. You're driving along everything's fine you make a right turn and there's nothing there well Hefner has raised some money on his own and he along with Foley's the bar in New York that does a great job as well they've got a charity event going on tonight guys between seven and nine you show up Hefner's going to be there Dylan G with Troy Hawkins basically just hang out talk baseball pictures autographs things like that half the bar tap for those two hours going to the relief efforts and they've already raised a couple thousand dollars by naming a cheeseburger after uh, the area called the 405 burger. So uh, Hefner doing a great job getting out in the community. That'll be great. Uh, it's a great event to go to Foley's a wonderful place with all the, the baseball memorabilia they've got in the building there. Well done. All right. I got two hits last night. You're a little surprised to see Davis as the pinch hitter in this spot rather than somebody to want to run her over. Yeah, play for play for a run, you know, augment the lead. But one swing of the bat, you get a couple of runs. Of course, one swing by Ike, you might get a couple of runs. The limited bench. That's what's the problem. Mm -hmm. And Ramirez behind him, three and zero. So after walking Quintanilla, he's three and zero on Davis. And Ike was two for four last night. I don't know how Charlie does it? He's got to drive him crazy, Charlie Manuel. I mean. He's got two reliable relievers in Papelbon, who has stumbled in his own right, and Bastardo, and everything else has been a roll of the dice. Well, Adams being on the DL has really hurt the team because he was their setup guy. But still, their middle relief is, um, well, not very good.
Three and one to Ike. And he walked him. And the Mets have the first two men on in the seventh. So after Ramirez retired the side in order in the sixth with a couple of strikeouts, unable to throw to strike to start this inning. Jake Deakman, the left hander, and Luis Garcia, the right hander. Each of them pitched last night. Well, you got a red hat. Here comes Charlie. He's going to make a move. And I tell you what, with Young up, even though he's hot, I'd have to put a little bun on here. Set it up for yeah. Murph and, and right. Well, he wants the left hander, which enables Young to bat from the right side, where he's a better hitter. So we'll see what Terry Collins decides to do with Young. Deekman coming into the game. The call to the bullpen brought to you by Infinity, luxury cards that deliver inspired performance. That guy celebrating Ike Davis drawing a walk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Phillies needs, fan infiltrating. Jake Deekman comes on in relief. That kid needs to go to Arthur Murray. <laughs> well, Deekman pitched in the last night's ball game. An inning pitch to hit a walk. Uh, he's a guy that throws from the side. He has some control issues too, although only 12 and a third innings pitched. Worked an inning last night in the eighth, gave up a walk and a single. They'll face Eric Young with first and second and nobody out. Young is one for three, singled, stole the base, and scored a run in the fifth. And the Phillies are playing looking for the bunt with Quintanilla at second and Davis at first and nobody out. What do you think? I'd let him swing one pitch. If he doesn't get the uh, pitch he wants, you could do that. And gets a strike on him, then go to putting the bunt on. Big hole on the left side. And he is bunting and fouls it off. Amazing sometimes the players that so beautifully bunt for base hits have a hard time with the sacrifice bunt. Well, the thing about Eric is, as well as he swung the bat right handed and as fast as he is and hard to double up, yeah. might be worth taking a shot. It's tough with the signs. Especially with a left hand hitter on deck. He was bunting on the first pitch and bunting again. Now he pulls it back, tries the butcher boy, and misses on the swing. And now it's 0 2. One thing about the butcher boy is if you notice, when players try to do it, they forget about the strike zone. You could have taken that, got the 1 1. So it used to be that when you tried the butcher boy, you'd be choked up on the bat. Just trying to chop it and put it in play. Oh boy. Ruiz did well to keep that from going to the backstop. One and two.
Philly pitchers have walked six so far this afternoon and Deekman comes in to strike out young for the first out of the inning. That's eight strikeouts for Philly pitchers. To me this is a classic case that young didn't know exactly what he wanted to do with that at bat. He didn't know whether he wanted to sacrifice it or swing it and he did neither. So one away now Murphy who's one for three on the day. Doubled stole the base scored a run in the first. Helped set up a run with a deep fly ball in the fifth. That got young over to third with one out. Now bats with two aboard and one out of the seventh. And he loops one into shallow right center. That's going to fall for a base hit. Quintanilla turns third. He heads on in. Daniel Murphy with an RBI single to stretch the mid lead to five to two. Good read there by Quintanilla. Better hitting by Murphy. Well, it's all about knowing where your outfielders are positioned. It's a hanging slider right there on the tee. Murph got a little bit out in front. Look where Mayberry is, shading to the opposite field. The ball's going to drop. You got to know that Dillman Young is just not going to get to a whole lot. So the Mets have a run home in the seventh. Charlie Manuel will make another pitching change. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Infinity, luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. Next. <laughs> Fourth major league appearance. Fourth, but one last night against the Mets. He went an inning and a third and walked a couple. Garcia comes in to face David Wright with two men on. Mets already have a run home here in the seventh and lead five to two. Davis at second and Murphy at first with one out. Wright drove in a run with a single to center his last time up in the fifth. He's also drawn a walk. One for two on the day. David now three for seven in this series. Mets have lost seven straight games to the Phillies at City Field, trying to dispose of that streak today. And right goes after the first pitch fastball from Garcia, nothing and one. Marlon Bird has already had a productive day. He's on deck. Twenty six year old Luis Garcia getting his first taste of big league action the last 10 days. Ball to strike. Just like Ramirez and Deakman and Garcia now. The Freitas all have good arms. Have trouble getting him in the strike zone. It was ever thus. <laughs> Luis Garcia the former Newark Bear. 
Deals 1 1. And the bounces the slider. Two balls and a strike. You know what you'll see from young pitchers, especially out of the bullpen? And they come in in key situations. So it's in a highly leveraged, tough situation. But they'll throw the strikeout pitch before they get to two strikes. And good hitters like David Wright are not going to swing at that pitch. Well, it's very glaring what the Phillies' Achilles he, uh, heel is. I should say. Well, is. It's hard to say the Phillies Achilles. Yes. I was trying to think of singular or plural. <laughs> Grounded over the third base bag. Young gets the out at second, and that's all. And that's the second out. So Young was playing right on the line, and that was the place to be. So now the Mets have runners to the corners with two down, and Marlon Burke coming up. Watch his right foot slip. Yep. Nice recovery. Remember, he double clutched early in a double play ball that cost the Phillies a run early. Did Udley think that was the third out? Didn't it look like he was running off the field? I, I thought when I first looked at it that he did not have a chance at right. So no, 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 no. He's just running it in. Yeah. Just getting out of the way of Murph. He's feeling frisky. Always good to get out of the way of Murph. <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> Marlon Bird is two for three today. Singled it a run back in the first. Nets have a run home here in the seventh. Two on and two out. And Bird won't chase the slider. Two and oh. Now the Phillies bullpen has been a problem all year long. Dead last in ERA, opponents batting average, most walks. That's a problem. Wow. And their closer, Jonathan Papelbon, has blown five of his last 12 save opportunities. He had been spotless early in the year. Bird taking all the way a strike, two and one. Josh Satin would be next. Luis Garcia, the fourth Phillies pitcher of the afternoon, the third in this inning. And Bird swings through the fastball two and two. It's one of those innings late in the game that you hope doesn't come back to haunt you. Probably thinking you should have had a bigger inning. Two two and he got him with a slider. So Garcia comes in and gets two outs. Mets score one in the seventh and lead 5 2.
then. Only one other game underway in the National League and just underway. The Pirates and Reds after Cincinnati won last night. Everything else tonight. The Dodgers now just a game and a half behind the Diamondbacks for first place in the West. Arizona will be in San Francisco with Wade Miley on the mound trying to hold the fort. That's you know going to be interesting in that game is to see with the extra rest because this last start was against the Mets how Matt Cain pitches. Well, as Latroy Hawkins comes in to pitch the eighth for the Mets today. Remember the start before that for Cain he had been knocked out early. Yeah. And then not only did the Mets knock him out in the first inning but was really was really a red flag was how quickly Bruce Bochy got his bullpen working. It, it made, made me feel as though you know he, he's something's wrong. Yeah he's hurt. Also to uh, make a quick point here. It wasn't that long ago they were howling for uh, Don Mattingly's hide. And now they're ready to they're, they're right in a position to take over the lead in the West. So Hawkins makes his first appearance after the All Star break. He worked Sunday in Pittsburgh, gave up a run in an inning. Darren Ruff leads off in the top of the eighth for Philadelphia. Ruff is 0 for 2 in a walk. And Hawkins misses high for ball one. Latroy's availability has been spotty over the last few weeks, and that certainly has to be a concern. He's had some arm issues that have left him unavailable on a few occasions. And it's it's certainly um, been most notable when the Mets have played some long games, particularly that 16 inning game in San Francisco where Hawkins wasn't available. Well, how about the game before? Wasn't there a game that you two did against maybe Arizona where I think it was even before that well Valdespin was the next mm -hmm. in the pitch. Well Detroit out there and ready to go refreshed by the all star break. He's had five days off since his last outing. And rough fouls back the fastball at 95 when he's been on the mound the, the velocity has been terrific. But you know with older relief pitchers you worry sometimes about back to back days three days in a row. Mets had that issue with Scott Atchison That's earlier right. in the year. Atchison's now back and available, coming back from the elbow and groin injuries. They're, they're at a point in their career where you almost have to pitch every other day with these guys. It's really hard to pitch them back to back. And of course, the way bullpens are utilized these days, when it seems like you're using five and six pitchers every day. Sometimes the math doesn't work out yeah. if you only have seven relief pitchers. We'll try quick pitches rough and misses high three and two. But right now the Mets are carrying eight relief pitchers. All that, well that should change fairly soon. Here's the three two to rough, and it's hit in the air to right center. Over in the gap goes Bird. He's got plenty of room. One away. So one out and nobody on that Delman Young. Young is two for three but the biggest out in this game for the Mets came in the fifth inning. Zach Wheeler exited with the bases loaded two out on a three to two lead. Gonzalez Hermen came in and he struck out Delman Young to strand three. Mets have added two insurance runs since then. Hermen wound up going an inning and two thirds. Allowing no runs. Walking one and striking out three and because Wheeler failed to go five right now here man is in line to be the winning pitcher. Carlos Torres is loosening in the Mets bullpen now Torres is scheduled to start for the Mets Tuesday night today is his throw day. So I would imagine he might be available for a batter Ooh. or two. A, a batter or two or he's getting his bullpen session in now that you've gotten past a certain point. That it's going to be Hawkins whoever you have to get through the eighth and of course of Bobby pitching the ninth if you have the lead. Of course it being the Mets in 2013 would Torres be better advised to wait till the game is over just to make sure there isn't a 17th <laughs> inning for him to pitch. I mean uh, today exactly but today's game if you've got to be able to hold the three run lead. Justin DeFreitas up in the bullpen. Well, I mean, think about Jimmy Leland in the All Star game. Yeah. He didn't trust his team to hold a three run lead. That's why he brought Mariano in in the eighth. <laughs> Wanted to make sure that he could get Rivera in the game.
Hawkins and Young must have been teammates in Minnesota at some point, I believe. Is he peeking? No. Huh? A little early peak, though. Yeah. You want to look what the setup is. Driven out to right center, long run back for Lagaris, and it's over his head and short hopping the wall. And Delman Young cruises into second base with his second straight three hit game. Well, and all of his hits, most of his hits, where has he hit them? Right center field. He goes that way naturally, he drives the ball that way. So the Phillies have their eighth hit. Young at second with one out. Now John Mayberry, who's one for three, singled back in the second. Since then he struck out and fouled out. And the Mets will get the bullpen back to work behind Hawkins. And Mayberry takes a fastball for a strike. Troy, the fourth Met pitcher of the afternoon. Scott Rice came in to get two outs in the seventh. Lined, caught by Satin, and back to the bag goes Young. Two out. Satin's been in the right place a couple of times now. So now Carlos Ruiz has gone 0 for 3 today, including a strikeout and a double play. So Hawkins has had the ball hit hard against him, but he's got two outs and a runner at second. And Ruiz hits it in the air to right, and right there waiting for it is Marlon Byrd. Side retired. A double and one left. On to the bottom of the eighth with the Mets up three. Event. It's going on at your local Chevrolet dealer. Coming and drive away in your favorite Chevrolet today. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. The Mets leading the Phillies five to two. Josh Satin will lead off in the home eighth against Luis Garcia, who begins his second inning of relief. Cole Hamels is pitcher of record on the short side for the Phillies. If he takes the loss, it would be his 12th of the year. Only one pitcher in the major leagues has lost 12 games this year, and that's a former Philly, Joe Blanton, who's lost a dozen for the Angels. 
Garcia came in got two outs to end the seventh and now faces Satin leading off in the eighth. Josh is 0 for 2 in a walk has struck out twice today. And he takes low and inside from Garcia for ball one. Cole Hamels went five a lot four runs and seven hits J.C. Ramirez gave up a run in an inning plus Jake Diekman worked a third of an inning and now Garcia for two thirds. Mm. One and one to Satin. The Braves are underway in Chicago taking on the White Sox with Paul Mahalam on the mound. Atlanta started the day six and a half up on the Phillies, seven on the Nats. Jake Peavy pitching for the White Sox, right? Coming off the disabled list to make that start. Some interest in him around the league also. He doesn't want to go anywhere though. Well, just about anybody on the White Sox is for sale. <laughs> yeah. Michael Young makes the play on Satin one away. And the guy who gets mentioned very prominently as a target for trade rumors with the White Sox is Alex Rios. Now it will not enhance his trade value at all. The fact that last night Robin Ventura had to bench Alex Rios in the middle of the game for not running out of ground ball. Well he's notorious for it. We saw him here uh, not running out of ground ball. The only ground ball he ran out really and he's a fine hitter was the uh, the ground ball that ended up the perfect game for Matt Harvey he only hit against Matt Harvey in that game. Juan Lagares fouls one away. You know those things obviously don't go unnoticed by you know the GMs who are in the trade market. Unless you get a guy like that in a contender he'll play his fanny off for you for six weeks and you just don't bring him back. It's a short rental. Summer rental. So. They, could, they, could, they could be expensive though where you live. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Slider by Garcia, one and two. But also, you know, sometimes changes of scenery work. Sometimes they don't. Well, I mean, I mean, if you're the general manager of a team, you'd have to say to yourself, hey, "Listen, is this guy going to be a cancer in our clubhouse, or is he going to be a guy that's going to uh, give us a, a, a chance in September?" Hard decisions to make. Two and two to Lagaris with Anthony Recker on deck. By the way, I don't, I don't know if you noticed last night. Um, Oakland played a late game. You see, you got scratched from the Oakland lineup last night with a sore wrist. That would be your home run derby champion, Yoenis oh, Cespedes. Wow. Now I don't know if there's any connection between the two. Just does not look good though. Sore left wrist. Scratch first game out of the All Star break. And they lost the game. 2 2. And the slider foul back. Garris' swing seems much more in control. It's almost like he becomes a better hitter with two strikes, by the way. Well, he had two for three off the bench last night. Two for three today. He's got his average up over 250 now. So it's come a long way in a short period of time. Two two from Garcia, and he reaches for the slider and pops it up. A long run in for Delman Young. Out goes Utley. He can't get it. It's a fair ball, and it hops into the stands for a ground rule double. So Lagares has his third hit of the game as he pops one that lands inside the right field line for two bases. Well, two of those hits were Texas leaguers. Well, he aimed for that right field line last night, couldn't hit it. Huh. More accurate tonight. <laughs> so the Mets have their ninth hit. Lugaris has three of the nine. And here's Anthony Recker. Who's 0 for 3 today, drove in a run with a first inning fielder's choice. Third three hit game for Lagares. The last time Lagares had a three hit game was also against the Phillies back in June in Philadelphia. So while certain Mets have struggled against the Phillies, <laughs> 
Ligaris has found his mark. We're going to put his picture up there next to David Wright. <laughs> and Wrecker slashes a foul and it's 0 and 2. Strike three call down looking at a slider. Second strikeout for Luis Garcia. So two out of the inning. Well, we've seen Garcia's got an outstanding slider, late breaker that fools record. So two away now, Omar Quintanilla, who is 0 for 2 in a walk. Charlie Manuel heads out to the mound. He's got an inning and a third out of Garcia. He's got a lefty ready in the bullpen, so it looks like he's going to bring Antonio Bastardo into the game to face Quintanilla. So with Bastardo needing some work out of the all-star break, he'll come in here in the eighth. The call to the bullpen brought to you by Infinity. Luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. Bases loaded, two out, one run game. And Gonzalez Herman strikes out Delman Young to keep the Mets in the lead. And he is the pitcher of record, Mr. Herman, and looking for his first major league Willie. <laughs> Give him the ball. If the Mets, if Parnell's going to come in for the close. And all the Mets looking to add to their lead. With a runner in scoring position and two out, Antonio Bastardo out of the Philly bullpen. Well, Bastardo has a scoreless streak against the Mets. 11 appearances, nine innings. He's always been pretty tough against them. Left hander with an awfully good fastball, big, big breaking ball. We're coming to face Omar Quintanilla with a runner at second and two down. He had that two years ago, he burst on the scene, this Bastardo. Blazing fastball. Remember last year, Ronnie, he kind of lost a little velocity. Well, happens a lot of times when they're, those young pitchers are used 60, 70 games. In Toronto this afternoon, the Rays held on to beat the Jays 4 to 3. That's 16 wins in their last 18 games for Tampa Bay. They're now 16 games over 500. And they are two back. Of the Boston Red Sox and the Red Sox are playing of course right now just started their game. Tampa Bay Rays are the best example if you get good starting pitching night in and night out you have a chance to get on a streak and that's what they've done. Jeremy Hellickson started for them today only went five but they got four good innings out of their bullpen. Here's Quintanilla who's 0 for 2 in a walk today. 
Lagaris at second and two out. And he takes up an in from Bastardo. I mean, this 89 right there doesn't look like it. I think he's got a good life on that fastball. Andrew Brown out on deck to pinch hit if Quintanilla keeps the inning going. If the Mets do not get a run home, it'll be a save opportunity for Parnell. The Phillies have 9 1 and 2 in the order due up. Pinch hitter, then Jimmy Rollins and Michael Young. Probably see Kevin Franzen as a pinch hitter. Last we saw Franzen, he was hitting a walk off home run in Philadelphia against Carlos Torres. Are these pitchers working slow today or just my imagination? I don't believe it's your imagination. Don't call me Smokey Robinson. <laughs> Well, then it would be running away with you. <laughs> Strike call to Quintanilla. It's been a um, it's been a lazy, hazy, Traxlesque afternoon. Tra oh wow! Here's your hazy. And Quintanilla takes a strike. Two and two. Oh, that's a perfect tune for this moment in this game. I believe I believe the Ramones are perfect for just about any yeah. moment. You can't get on the Ramones in this booth. You lose. <laughs> I'm back. There are times in this booth where I want to be sedated is probably more appropriate. <laughs> but most of the time it's we're a happy family. <laughs> there you go. Here's the 2 2. <laughs> On the outside corner, Kintania caught looking to end the inning. On we go to the ninth. Parnell in to try and save it with the Mets up five to two. See the new model year lineup at JaguarUSA.com. By Planet Fitness, home of the Judgment Free Zone. By Toyota, see where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. By Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin'. By Honda, get a great deal on a new car you'll love at the Honda Summer Clearance Event. By Chase, sending money is as easy as sending an email with Chase Quick Pay. And by the all-new 2014 Mitsubishi Outlander. Bobby Parnell looking to earn his 18th save of the year. Served this, uh, saved the 17th on the Sunday before the All-Star break. Give up a couple of hits in an inning of work. 
Kevin Franzen will be the pinch hitter to lead off against Parnell in the top of the ninth. Mets scored three runs in the first inning off Cole Hamels, and so far that has been enough. Franzen takes a strike. The veteran Franzen, as we mentioned, had a walk off home run against the Mets in Philadelphia the last time the Mets were there. He's been a terrific pinch hitter this year 12 for 32 in a pinch hitting role. That's a 375 pinch hit batting average. Jimmy Rollins on deck, then Michael Young in the ninth as Parnell comes up a little short with that curveball. The spike caught. You let it go. One hop. No play here by Wrecker. It's like, okay, Bobby, we're telling you to pull the curtain shade down, but that's a little, a little extreme. Pull the tarp down. <laughs> to break the shade like that. <laughs> Heard of the 55 foot curveball that was about 35. <laughs> That's better than hanging it up high in the strike zone, right? One and one to Franzen. And that curveball sits high, two and one. Parnell, the fifth Met pitcher of the afternoon. Zach Wheeler went four and two thirds, left with the lead, but didn't get that third out in the fifth inning to qualify for a win. Come back to Parnell. One out. Coming up next on Picks 11, it's Unsealed Alien Files. Oh. Really? For more baseball entertainment on SNY, it's WB Mason Post Game Live. They may have some files to unseal, too. I'm going to have to rush home. Here's Jimmy Rollins, who homered to lead off the game. He's also single, two for four on the day. One out and nobody on. And Rollins takes one at his feet for ball one. You know, sometimes uh, after the first half is done, you kind of look at the different players on the team and you, and you think about you know, how they're playing. Are they playing better? Are they getting better as a ball player? Put a lot of thought into Bobby Parnell. And what I find extremely interesting, and I think it's really hard to even put in perspective, here's a guy that can throw a hundred, but the only way he can be successful is to throw 92 to 94. You know how much maturity that takes to have that weapon that you can't use because you need to spot the ball more than overpower hitters. I think that's a, amazing. It's a very hard thing to do. And. You know, it's taken a while for yeah. Bobby to get yeah. to that point. Remember that game we were in Boston? It's got to be four years yeah. ago now when he hit 100 on the gun and everybody got very excited. And from that point on, he became a, a slave to the gun. Rollins grounds one to the right side. Murphy makes the play. Two out. But it's taken him. To really the middle of last year and into this year to finally figure it out. And I think, uh, you know, we always talk about his time spent with Jason Isringhausen. You know, that's important, but honestly, you can never do this unless you do it yourself. Right. And, you know, credit has to go to Bobby. So the Phillies are down to their final out. Michael Young's been on base three times tonight, two walks, and have been hit by a pitch. And Parnell goes outside, ball one. Young lines one and it skips by Satin and into right field and the Phillies remain alive. Well, we'll see how they'll they'll rule that. I thought it was interesting before after the Ike Davis at bat getting on base. He wasn't left in the game to play defensively. Plays it. Mike caught the Mets there. You gotta give it an E3, don't you? Yeah. Gotta get in front of it. You don't get in front of well, it. It's an E3. Even and if they have did. scored it in there. Yeah. First error of the day for the Mets, who made three of them last night. First time they had had a three-error game this year. It was so the Phillies need one more base runner to get the tying run of the play with Dominic Brown on deck.
Utley is one for three in a sacrifice fly today. And it's taken inside ball one. So a two out error keeping the Phillies alive and perhaps giving that man a chance. So this is the out Parnell needs to get. Utley two for seven with a home run against Parnell. Young runs they let him go defensive indifference one and one to Utley. One one from Parnell and Utley fouls it away and now the Phillies are down to their final strike. One and two to Chase Utley. Fouled it away. 98 from Parnell. Still there. <laughs> wow. Again, the one two. A little bit low. And it's even on Utley. Arnell trying to finish it off. Driven to deep right field. Back goes Bird to the warning track. Looking up and it's out of here. A 2-1 homer for Chase Utley to get the Phillies within a run. His second home run in two nights and the first home run that Bobby Parnell has given up in almost a calendar year. Last home run that Parnell gave up was last August 4th to Chase Headley of the Padres and Utley connects for a two run shot to make this a one run game. RJ I questioned the pitch. Hang a knuckle curve that's what it was. Even if it was a good one it's the only pitch that Utley can catch up to in my opinion. Hit a breaking ball in yesterday's game out of the ballpark also. So now Dominic Brown comes up. Two out and nobody on and he takes a curve ball for a strike. Hanging slider here a curve. Oh boy right on the tee. Well. That Bobby will uh, regret that and it happens. Line drive base hit for Brown headed toward the gap and going all the way back to the warning track. Knocked down by Young picked up by Lagaris and Brown pulls in at second with a two out double and the Phillies just like that have the tying run in scoring position. Parnell retired the first two here in the ninth. Michael Young hit it hard but right at Josh Satin and it skipped by him for an error a two run homer by Utley and now Brown has followed with a double and the Phillies are right there. We've seen a couple of hits by Brown one in last night's game and one today to the left side of the diamond and that no doubles defense for the Mets did not matter. So now it's the rookie first baseman Darren Ruff at a basic could tie it for Philadelphia. You don't want Delman Young up. This is the man you got to go after and get. The youngster. Ruff is 0 for 3 in a walk today. 
And he can't catch up with 97 mile an hour heat. Almost went down. Nothing in one. That's another thing I see. Guys are falling on their face in their swing. Never seen so much of it. It's just, what are you doing? Swinging out of his socks. Here's the 0 1. Line drive caught by Murphy, and the ball game is over. Well, Bobby Parnell hangs on, and the Mets have even up the series with the Phillies. They get three in the first against Cole Hamels and hang on to win it in the ninth as the Mets win it five to four. Well, Zach Wheeler plowed through his four and two thirds innings pitch, but biggest that bat was against Gonzalez Herman, and he got the strikeout of Delman Young. That changed the game for the Mets and, and Herman with his first major league win. Well, the big run is in the seventh inning, folks, with the leadoff walk to Quintanilla. And then the uh, pinch hit by Ike Davis. He walks. And the RBI by Murph. Murph got the big run. They all count. Game summary brought to you by Lexus. The Golden Opportunity Sales event is here. Gonzalez Airmen gets his first big league win with an inning and two thirds of hitless relief behind Zach Wheeler. Parnell gives up a couple of unearned runs on the Utley home run and gets his 18th save. Cole Hamill's first 12 game loser in the National League, a three hit game. For Juan Lagares, as the Mets snap a seven game city field losing streak to the Phillies with a five to four win. We'll come back with more from Flushing in just a moment. 